What's going on, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Oli Cannoli Show. Today, we had Christian Iosif, and he is the founder of Side John, a platform where it connects founders to other founders. We talk about so many different types of things, like his passion for tech, the future, where the world is going. We even talk about ChatGPT, what the future has in store for us. But we also talk about a bunch of fun things, like his favorite quote, a new Arabic word, and we even talk about Avatar The Last Airbender. Be ready, stay tuned. So Christian, what are you passionate about? Uh, what am I passionate about? Um, I honestly, what gets me going is seeing people do the things that they wanna do. So like when I'm around and I just, even just like something small, right? So like when someone is like, yeah, I couldn't really like, you know, get myself out of bed today, but I, I figured out like, you know, I'll feel a lot better if I go to the gym or if I hang out with friends or if I like go see my family. Even just small things like that, like just kind of like the switch from going to doing stuff that they don't really want to do to like something that they actually want to do all the way up to like, what's it called? Them like deciding that uh, they don't want to work a corporate job and they just want to follow their dreams and like, you know, pursue a startup or like even just work on a small project on the side. Like that stuff. I'm just like, yeah, do it. Yeah. Like I, I have a friend that, uh, what's it called? He, what, what does he do? He, he details cars. And, uh, you know, like, uh, the, yeah. have you, do you watch any, like, YouTube videos I've actually, like that? It's, like, the ASMR of, like, oh, the so rap good. sometimes. They yeah, kill it yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, have you seen people, like, wash it, though? Like, like um, beforehand? Like, before they even get to, like, the detailing? Yeah, like, they'll just, like, cover it in, like, white stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they'll just, like, uh, they'll do ceramic coatings and stuff. Uh, my friend does, like, that stuff. Okay. And uh, he, I, I keep telling him to make content. And he's just such, he's so lazy. I hope he hears this. <laughs> you're, you're <laughs> hella lazy. <laughs> but... Um, but uh, uh, we keep like uh, encouraging him. But anyways, pretty much told him to do like the setup that we that you have here, which is like just have cameras set up. Don't take them down. Leave them up all the time. And whenever you start working on a new car, just press record, mm -hmm. and then it'll you could just start recording like the stuff that you normally do. Throw it into the AI like tool and have it like edit for you. And like even if it's choppy, like fuck you know, put it out there. It yeah, doesn't matter. Even just like little clips too. It's like weird because like we're at the age now where it's. We've like everything is contentified, you know. Like it's like everything yeah, yeah. is content now. It's like your lifestyle, this, that. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's like if you're already doing whatever it is you're doing, mm -hmm. just hit record, show people because again, you're still expressing knowledge. You're still showing a craft, yeah. and then you could teach people even what you're doing, and you could even mm -hmm. show because oh, people love watching things, right? Yeah. Entertainment is such a big industry for a reason, right? And we all have these little entertainment devices in our pot hands all the time. Yeah. So. If you're already doing something, you're already doing this business, you're already doing this thing that you love doing, you might as well share that gift with the world. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I work at Comcast and uh, just recently in a call, they said that something like 80 something percent, I'm, I'm butchering the number. I know it's it was a high number and I was yeah. like, damn, uh, hella, hella content. It's, mm -hmm. it's all just all the Internet is just straight people watching content, like for mm -hmm. the most part. Um, so it's, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. And the thing is, too, especially if it's something like useful like car detailing or something that's creative yeah that's way better than some of the brain rot that we are seeing so if yeah. you can create good content out there please create good content yeah what's what's brain rot what, what would you consider okay so brain rot is like you know the subway surfers or the minecraft jumping videos oh, yeah, but then yeah, yeah. that's one half of the video but then the other half of the video is like a, like reddit, a reddit post, post or something talking i watched them, so many of those and then. i watch them too because yeah. it's, it hooks you but some of it is like complete bs yeah where you're yeah, just yeah. learning to like you're not watching anything knowledgeable but it's like you're telling yeah. me that you need to have some subway surfers or something in the background for my attention to be there mm. but then what does that do to our mental like acuity of like oh, focus you know it's like you need someone to be sitting there like with a subway surfer stick above yeah. their head for you to lock in yeah it's, i see like a bunch of videos that are like people like they're on a date and the person has like a subway surfer's like video playing above their heads like yeah. the, their date can like focus with them that's i'm like so crazy it's nuts right and i'm just like that's why if you can post good content you might as well do it see like i i, I have a problem with my attention too because i'm on tiktok and instagram so much so that i set like a timer every day i can only do an hour and a half mm -hmm. and then uh it just pops up and it's like you can't do it anymore unless you use the password yeah my i gave my girlfriend the password uh so just, that's, smart. <laughs> yeah. that's so smart yeah but like i i find that like when i'm working on something that i'm interested in i'll like be able to pay attention for like long periods of time mm -hmm. so when i'm like talking to you or talking to like someone that just can hold a good conversation i'm like captivated you know i'm yeah. in so like figuring out what you like to do is is like a good way to find out like uh um you know the level of like concentration that you can hold yeah it's like i'm not distracted or bored i'm just not yeah. doing something i like doing mm -hmm. and that's like kind of how it is even like when you're growing up like imagine like you're taking a bunch of 
kids that are in second grade, third grade, putting them in a classroom, and you're expecting all of them to act the same and treat the school system the same. Yeah, but like it's terrible. You know, so but me, like I was a hyperactive kid, so same. I needed and required more energy from the teacher, more energy from things. When mm. the kid was taking too long to answer questions, I'm sitting there like. So were you good at school? Yeah, I was. But like I was like the uh, good at see. school that didn't need to study. But like yeah, same, if same. I did study it would have been better. But like I just didn't care enough, like you yeah, said, like about yeah. the school. No, same. To like let me study really hard on this yeah. test. Because I'm just like, I don't care. Like <laughs> Yeah. I, I feel like they I feel like adults just did a they didn't do a good job of explaining how good school is for for you mm-hmm. like you know i mean i you know outside of like what fucking uh cosine and like tangent and you know like yeah uh calculus i think that's calculus right? yeah 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 outside of that stuff that's like not really going to be applicable to your normal life like they just didn't do a good they just said do it yeah you know they're like you're gonna do this this year you're gonna do that next year and you're gonna do well and if you don't do well you're uh a piece of shit yeah <laughs> And it's no. like you need a good teacher the same way you need a good coach. You need a good mentor. It's yeah. like having that good person to teach you like, yo, this is why it's important. That changes levels. Like oh, some of my favorite teachers to this day were the teachers that actually cared. Like yeah. they care, teachers were like, yo, the reason why we're doing this is because this. Like I remember when I was in elementary school, I had a teacher. Her name is Miss Mora. And I actually had her on the podcast. And I taught – Remember? Oh, nice. We, I remember us doing like – the marble uh, thing where you drop the marble and you're measuring physics. We're doing a physics problem in third grade, right? Mm-hmm. But she's dro- watching, dropping marbles and we're racing them across it. And she's showing us oh, yeah, why yeah. just straight down and then go doesn't with the right. curve and getting the best yeah. curve and racing the marble. How heavy the marble is. Does it matter? It's She allowed us to ask questions and it was fun. It was hands on. Mm-hmm. No matter if you were the introverted kid in the class versus the extroverted kid in the class. Everyone was locked in. Everyone was so engaged because it was an engaging experience. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that, that, that makes me uh, think about like uh, what's it called? The whole – what we were talking about earlier, which is uh, like just finding something that you're interested in. Mm-hmm. Like I wonder how passionate she really was about what she was working on. You know? Exactly. About, and then that just brings like the best out of people. You know, and then it and then it impacts like you, mm-hmm. and it impacts like your other next, people yep. around you, and especially since we're so young and impressionable, it's so easy to like be you know either brought down or brought up. Yeah. So like f- having people like that around you that are passionate are uh, is like really nice. Yeah. Makes well, a big difference. What would you say? What would you say would be a trick or something that you've done maybe in life or you've noticed that allowed you to get closer to what you're passionate about and what you like doing versus like the average advice you know like what was something that actually felt like it worked when you started going to it it's funny it's like a, it's kind of like the scientific method Practi- practically I mean mm-hmm. you just like you you theorize about what you might like um, and then you try it out and if it doesn't work try something else now a lot of people spend too much time trying something and they're like oh well maybe if I do it this way or maybe if I spend this amount of time or because they try and make it work because like at the end of the day like uh, for example um, this method you can apply to like a, creating a business and like starting a startup mm-hmm. you know you try like one feature it doesn't really work out there's not a lot of engagement you look at the traction you try another feature you, you know so it's like this method can be applied to a lot of different like areas of your life mm-hmm. um, but that that's, that's pretty much what helped me because um, what when I was in college, I don't know what I wanted to do. I know I like tech. Tech is cool. I mean, yeah. look, look, look at that sign. I don't even know how it works, but I want to know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, so like uh, since I was super into tech, I, I still didn't I, – I wasn't good at like comp sci. I, I wasn't good at like coding. Um, and honestly, I thought it wasn't something that I wanted to do at all. And then someone in my career path was like, hey, like I code. I, you know, do well for myself. Like I can teach you, I can like guide you a little bit. And then eventually he became my mentor and, um, I still don't like coding. <laughs> <laughs> so this is kind of like one of those examples of like, you know, maybe I've spent too much time kind of like on this path of like, uh, maybe this is something that I like. Um, but I know I still like tech. So as I like learned how to code, I learned about like product and I learned more about business. And so like that, that led me to understand that, I'm I'm actually interested in how people interact with tech, yeah. not necessarily like how the tech is built and like how it works on the back end. Even though that stuff is interesting, I don't need to be in the weeds like figuring out like a coding problem. You mm-hmm. know? It's like knowing what you like, but it's funny because like something yeah. that you may not really like could eventually lead you to the thing you really like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, that's that's gonna happen all the time. So it's kind of like uh, not being too hard on yourself. Um, a lot of people like beat themselves up for it. And like, I mean, like I've been told that I beat myself up for like my <laughs> mistakes and stuff, but like, I, I don't think it, it's, it definitely might seem like that way on the outside, but it's really just like taking like an, an objective look at it, very unbiased, you know, understanding where you're at and then looking at your other options and, you know, picking them. And if you take too long to do something, like 
you know, like it is what it is. You're, you're here now. Like, yeah. where, where, are you going to look back and just like make yourself feel bad mm-hmm. and Ex- then just not pick something else, for example? You no, know, that makes sense. And it's funny because even like, I don't know, like in my life, when I did things I liked, I was mm-hmm. locked in. Yeah, right. You, yeah. You, you can't even, time is cooking by and you're like, yeah, yeah. oh, snap, it's been three hours and I'm still doing this thing. I love doing it. It's great. Yeah. And yeah. It's, you feel awesome. But mm-hmm. then you do something where you're sitting in class, right? Where you look at the clock and you're like, five minutes. Right, every five minutes, like f- 10 more five minutes that go by, I'll be out of this yeah. class. Yeah. But then, like, how crazy is that mentally to think about? Like, exactly. how boring that must be for you or mm-hmm. how much you don't want to be in this environment. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure people have had classes where, like, I had a history class in ninth grade. I loved every minute. I would look forward to going into that class, not only because of like the class itself, the teacher, but like the students in the class, like mm-hmm. how much that matters to be engaged. Like I remember, look, we're learning about history. We're learning about either there's a robber baron or a capital captain of industry. What was the difference? Are they all just robber barons because of the mass of wealth and how they made it? Or did some people actually push innovation and culture? What was mm-hmm. the difference? And it was such an intru- like, it was interesting conversation. We're sitting there raising mm-hmm. our hands, talking about it. People have opinions. He has an opinion. She has an opinion. Right. We're all going back and forth. And that was what was fun to me. Yeah. But classes where like everyone has to shut up, listen, yeah. write, not listen. interactive. It, you know, yeah, yeah, you could be accept like learning information, but you're just re- remembering it to regurgitate on the test and then completely forget about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's I, it's interesting that you get and you have that sense of like just try different things and then see what sticks, and you never know what might get lead you to the next thing. But then there's also like figuring out what you like. For example, there's the do. Mm-hmm. And then there's the reason why you do. Yeah. So it's like sometimes like like for example, I don't, you know, obviously I don't like coding. I've said that already. Um, but the reason why I'm coding is because I'm building Side John. Mm-hmm. And so because I believe in it so much, that's why like sometimes I'll like start coding on Side John. Um, and then I'll just like two, three hours later, I don't even notice the time passes by. Mm-hmm. And it's because I'm like interested in solving a problem that gets me to like for, for yeah. my reason, you know. So it's like. Like all those students in your class, like even though maybe like some of them weren't super interested in what they were, uh, what's it called, what the topic was, maybe the reason for like being engaged in the class is just because they like to interact with other people. Yeah. So like, and then so the, so they kind of like, because then like you're not going to talk to them now and be like, yo, so, well, you know. <laughs> what was the reason? <laughs> Remember? <laughs> yeah. Was the, you know, or like the, that specific topic about it, they'll be like, I don't know what you're talking about. I just yeah. thought it was fun because of this and that or whatever, you know. No, that makes sense. And it's interesting because the like energy of like being in a different experience or you're doing something that you like mm-hmm. doing and not doing, right? Like for example, an athlete, right? Mm-hmm. Do they really want to be lifting heavy weights twenty four seven yeah, and grinding exactly. and doing sprint workouts up hills? Yeah, no, yeah, but they're yeah. doing it because then it, you're a better performance athlete later down the road. That's why yeah. you're doing it. Like even for me, like I remember like being in the gym and stuff, like in college and like training and running over the summer, like grinding, running, running. I'm not doing that because I like doing Kinda it and sucks. being tired, right? I don't want to be sweating my tail <laughs> off, right? But I know that this is going to make me a better athlete, better person. Yeah. Better this. It's like mm-hmm. the discipline to do something is for that end goal, that extended delayed gratification. Mm-hmm. And I think that even with coding, even though you don't really like doing it, it's that you're delaying the gratification because of the passion of the actual mission. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, I, it, you know, it goes for working out. It goes for, like, what else can you do that's, like, good for you that, like, uh, I don't know, creative? Yeah. Like, creative stuff, like mm-hmm. drawing. Like, a lot of creatives, they, like, it takes them forever to, like, write a book, you know, uh, maybe a paragraph for their book that they've been talking about for the last, like, three years. Yeah. And it's just because, like, they don't want to do – they don't want to make a mistake. So they don't want to mm-hmm. uh, make a mistake and, like, try something and have it fail. Um, but it takes us back to what we said before. Like, just try it. It doesn't matter if you fail. Actually, if you fail, that's like a good like baseline for you to like learn from and like try something else, you know? And to keep going, it's like you can't get, if you never do, you never get it done. It's like, yeah. oh, I love painting so much. And I want to paint professionally. I want to sell paintings. Okay, show me some paintings. Oh, well, they're in my head. Or, oh, well, I've thought about it. Well, yeah. There's paint. And then see what comes out and then yeah. keep doing until you're like, here it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They just, they just come out. And, yeah, no, I agree. I think that's like the best way to do it, honestly. Just like, like a bunch of rough drafts. Because mm-hmm. um, honestly, your rough draft gets so good that maybe to you it's still a rough draft, but to other people it's just like a whole different level of quality. Mm-hmm. And to them it's amazing. Yeah. And to you it's like, it's kind of like, like for, for Sai John, sometimes I'm talking to people and I'm like, yeah, I'm at this point of the progress. Mm-hmm. Um, but then to me, to them, it's like, wow, that's amazing. Like what, what you're doing. And to me, it's like, since I've been a part of the progress, um, it's not amazing to me anymore. Yeah, you I get, know I'm here because you get desensitized. of the things that I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, there's no such thing as like, uh, what ultimate success. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, maybe you're looking for like the next goal or you're looking for the next, like, 
you know, accomplishment, you're, you're looking for milestones, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, a milestone is like defined by you. So like if you're if you're like definition of your if your goal is like way too far and it's going to take you like a year or two to get there, you're obviously not going to be encouraged to continue and keep doing the, the bullshit that comes in between all this yeah. stuff that you enjoy, you know. No, that makes a lot of sense. And it's even like for the voice box, right? Like I have mm-hmm. been doing it so long, but it's like I'll pitch or present and everyone's like, dude, I didn't realize how far along you were. I'm mm-hmm. like, am I? Like, you know, like I yeah. had to take a step back. I'm like, I guess I am kind of far along with the journey. Like, it's like I a have. train, you know, you just you hop on it and it just keeps going. And life doesn't stop. So things yeah. just keep building and growing, whether it be the back end or the front end. It's like, and people, the thing is, is like, it's funny because people only see the result. Like people only see the front end stuff. Like here it yeah. is. Use this. Try yeah. this out. Right, this right. has 100,000 downloads. This has 1 million people on it. But they don't yeah. see all the people you met to get to that level that yeah. connected you with this person, this person, that person, the hours of meeting this person, the hours of collaborating with this person and talking about what could it look like? What could it look like? Okay. The UI, the UX, the developing, right? No mm-hmm. one sees all that stuff, nor do people care. Right. Yeah. It, it depends. Cause like if you can make it good content, then they could care. Cause it's like a, like backstage stuff, you know, mm-hmm. people like to see behind the scenes. People like to see like, for example, on uh, my side John page, mm-hmm. um, I'll post like, you know, like maybe like the, the promotional content, mm-hmm. I'll get some likes here and there and whatever. Then I'll post like me pitching at an event and they're like, that's cool. That mm-hmm. looks, that, that, wow, that's, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And then like, same thing with like this podcast, people don't know we're currently recording it. Yeah. But so, but when it comes out, like, yeah, that's cool. And then if I show some like behind the scene pictures, they're like, whoa, that's, that's what it looks like. That's like, you know, it kind of creates like more like, uh, avenues for conversation Mm -hmm. there's like layers behind each project that you're going into each thing you do and try to achieve Mm -hmm. which i think is pretty cool but even just because you've been mentioning it i want to ask you what is side john yeah yeah i have a i have a platform that helps um founders find partners for the new ventures Mm -hmm. so that's like the super simple way of like that's that's like when people ask me for my like what is it that's that's it's that's a sentence yeah that's like the sentence i've been i've been like and it's so funny actually just figuring out that sentence is really hard and it's taken like months to do Mm -hmm. um and uh it's it's funny if you can't communicate like your business uh, anyways, I'm getting I'm getting off topic, but if you can't communicate your business, it takes like a while to do so, um, to kind of like uh, refine it, mm-hmm. and um, I'm still refining it actually. It's a process, yeah. Like it's that whole journey, the yeah. process. Even for me, when I'm like, okay, what is Voicebox, a uh, voice centered social media platform that's focused on fixing the way we communicate with one yeah. another? Yeah, but then I'm like. It's an app that uses voice memos only, basically. It's, and then, and then, if I want to <laughs> simplify, side John, it's a platform that matches co-founders. You know what I mean? Like that's you know. really all it is. Yeah, but yeah, there's, yeah. Uh, obviously, there's layers. It's deeper than that. Yeah, but yeah. to like just the naked ear, almost of just mm-hmm. one little sentence, one little blurb. It's like, what can you say? We match co-founders. We we match partners. Um, we. The the idea came from uh, what's it called? I, I I was growing up in in I was in college. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I needed some guidance. I found a mentor, right? But once I built the skills to actually build something, I kept meeting people that were wanting to work on their own thing, but not on what I was working on. Mm-hmm. So like, it's so hard to find. It's it's hard to find someone that's working on their own thing first of all, mm-hmm. and to find someone that wants to work on the same thing as you is kind of it's it's pretty hard to find but they're out there there's no way that like this idea for side john doesn't exist anywhere else yeah it yeah. actually does and mm-hmm. it's been existed and people have had this idea for like forever um the problem is like can you find like a, a team that can like support you while you're building the product and i don't know i don't even mean like them doing things for the business but like support you mentally like uh you yeah. know like you and i are part of the community we're part of philly startup leaders mm-hmm. um you you went to venture cafe too right i haven't been there yet you guys have been recommending me to yeah, go yeah. but I, I have to make a drive over there you gotta go and then you're you're part of philly tech entrepreneurs now yeah. so like just having people around you like supporting you while you're building and doing the thing that makes such a big difference because they bring in ideas they they listen to you um Maybe you might find an idea that opposes, um, you know, what you've been thinking about. And so, like, once you start, like, uh, getting, like, a variety of different ideas, it really helps you, like, kind of figure out the path that you want to go in. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. And it's interesting because even when you kind of meet these people, Mm -hmm. you never know. Like, someone might give you a little bit of game here, a little bit of game there, a little connection there, a little connection here. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. And also, one thing I've noticed is... And I've like noticed within this journey of creating a company, it's, mm-hmm. you can't really think of everything by yourself. 
Yeah. It's impossible. You yeah. you yourself, it's like you read your your, your own paper, right? You mm-hmm. have to send it to someone else to edit it because you've seen that word 3,000 times. So you're not even going to see that it says Apple and it's spelled A-B-P-L-E. But nah, you yeah. don't see that. So, so someone else looks like, bro, you didn't put a P. Oh, my God. I missed that for the last two, 10 times I've seen this. Yeah. But you miss it because you've seen it so often that it becomes normalized. Mm, you know I what I mean? So it's like you've seen your own project so often. You don't even see that there might be something that could be better. You might not think, like, how else would this practically be used? Because we all use things differently. For example, mm-hmm. the way you use one app, and I use that, the same app could be ver- could vary. So yeah. how different can someone use different platforms? Okay, so what to do when I meet someone that uses it this way, someone that uses it this way? And then getting all those people one by one, and you're learning, listening, learning, listening, and that's kind of how you, like, create the best version of whatever it is you're creating yeah 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 but then if you take like too many ideas that's like a problem too yep because you end up uh it's it's like i'm, I'm trying to think of like a visual um imagine you're in like a cave mm-hmm. and then an idea is like a new like tunnel like mm-hmm. in one direction you can like start exploring that tunnel but then like you'll hear uh, behind you like, oh, there's another idea. There's another tunnel that just opened up. Maybe you should explore that. So before you even get far into this tunnel to find what you're looking for, you end up going through a different tunnel. Mm-hmm. And then while you're on in these different silos, you, you can't make progress if you're only barely exploring them. Um, you can only, uh, you can only like kind of like, it's like dipping your toe into the pool and not really knowing what it feels like to swim. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. Sometimes you got to dive all in, right, and go down your tunnel until you either hit a dead end, hit something, find gold, right? You keep going down your path. And as you go down the path, new tunnels might open up here and there. Look at it, listen to it, and then go back to your tunnel. And kind of adjust as you see fit. And a way I kind of noticed this in my life is like someone always has something to tell you, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, what if you did this? Hey, what if you did that? Hey, what if you did this? What about this? And you can listen to it. And until something actually strikes that inner core where it's also aligning with your focus, then go for it. But you have to be able, like you said, have that filter where you're not just listening to every advice and then you end up opening up like a labyrinth of tunnels yeah. that never finished to any regard. Yeah. And, uh, and, and when you, it's, it's either you strike gold or you figure out that maybe this wasn't the tunnel you're supposed to go down. Mm-hmm. And, but you're the one that has to define that. Yeah. Right. You have to decide like, what does it look like for you to get to a point in your journey where maybe you shouldn't be going down this path anymore? And I don't necessarily mean within business or with Saijon specifically, but with just like the, the decisions that you're making, right? Like you can backtrack and go a different direction. The, it doesn't mean you're doing it for a year. Mm-hmm. doesn't mean two years or doesn't mean, you know, maybe this like uh, new decision doesn't have any fruit after like however so many months, maybe even just a day, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but like to be able to make that decision on whether or not you should keep going and stop, you have to add like context because you can't just like do that in a vacuum either. Being in your tunnel is great, but like like that context could be these different ideas that are coming around or like understanding more about your tunnel, about like the way it's structured and the way um, it's been structured. Maybe like you can start creating your own tunnel. I mean like, you know. Mm-hmm. There's all that things where they, they might call it research and development or I, yeah. it's like we call it finding your tunnel and fixing, <laughs> yeah. uh, adjusting, adding some yeah. lights in your tunnel, like, all those different types of things. And it's cool because even when you kind of are in like locked into your game right you're mm-hmm. you're focused only you can see the rest of the vision right like mm-hmm. you've thought about it more than yeah. mumbo jumbo joe who comes to you and he's saying hey christian what if you did this and yeah. he, you're thinking like okay but i just spent three years thinking about this too you don't think i thought you don't think i thought about that so what? you're just gonna attack him <laughs> just like st- stupid i already thought about that <laughs> and the thing is but then like even for me like sometimes like i remember getting like um uh, interviewed for like a like thing on like the pitching competition and stuff mm-hmm. and the one guy asked me like oh like how is this gonna take away from uh tiktok users and i wanted to like obviously it was a good question because he's curious right but mm-hmm. then in my head i'm like by being its own app like every app has millions upon millions of users billions of users here mm-hmm. and there it doesn't mean that because they're succeeding at one thing doesn't mean i can succeed at something else mm-hmm. within the same space mm-hmm. same way where it's like oh there's there's other founder sites blah, blah blah okay but why did you still have that problem even though there's still founder mm-hmm. sites you know it's like there's still a problem whether you see fit it's like what if yours is more for people who like it's more real it's more, more for gen z rather than some millennial boomer style ai ui design where it's 
not really focused on helping the, the startup start like the ground up you know because like yeah. i think people forget like the hardest part is that that first part where like to actually meet someone to talk to about it and link mm-hmm. and connect with mm-hmm. what are you gonna do just hope for the best and mate go to these events but what if you don't have resources around you mm-hmm. so then mm-hmm. a site like this can actually bring people together yeah and again on a similar part that they want to work on imagine someone's mm-hmm. like okay i have a bunch of technical skills but i don't have ideas I've met developers yeah. tell me that. They're like, dude, look, yeah, I, ha- I have all these skills, but I've never came up with an idea that I'm passionate enough to work on, like hard. Yeah. So because of that, they look for people to work mm-hmm. for. They like Some people enjoy working for someone else. Yeah, yeah. Hey, tell me what to do. I'll do it, get it done. Mm-hmm. I like that. Some people like that. Some people are the complete opposite. I need to be the creative, the crazy yeah. one telling you, what if we did yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, we're all different. You know, we all have our own yeah. role to play. And that's mm-hmm. why it's like, you have to figure out, like you said, who you are, what mm-hmm. you like, and mm-hmm. then kind of diving 100% into that and understand that there's nothing wrong with whatever you choose Mm -hmm. you know unless it like affects people negatively (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) but then like otherwise yeah it doesn't you could choose whatever you can work for someone else for the rest of your life that's great Mm -hmm. that's honestly fine because some people don't want the stress you know having to work for yourself comes with stress comes with uh what's it called a lot of disorientation sometimes a lot of opinions a lot of uh you know figuring it out on your own sometimes you're alone Mm -hmm. um but and then uh, f- working for someone else is like you get that security, you get paid decently well, depending on what you do. You're able to spend specifically, you're able to spend more time doing the things that maybe you want to do outside of work. Because uh, sometimes like work isn't for everyone. I personally don't really like working. I'm pretty lazy. Yeah. Um, but like, but it's like if I if I didn't have to work, I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Um, but work, yeah. but doing something that I, I I find interesting that that's what I like. And so, like, if you can find, like, that balance, then it just doesn't end up feeling like work. Yeah, like, work and play. Like, even it's, yeah. it's weird. Like, I'll spend, like, a couple hours on doing this editor or a couple hours, like you said, like, mm-hmm. driving over here to this event, even though it's, like, you're driving a couple, like, an hour plus for this event or here or here. You're going here. Mm-hmm. It's, like, dang, That's I wouldn't do it. But then it's, like, why? It's, like, the why, like, that mm-hmm. mission, like you said, that yeah. mission is I don't mind the drive, even though driving isn't life. I don't like driving that much. Yeah. But, because there's an end goal there's a means to an end so yeah. it's like there's a way to get get it going and then even it's like oh but you have a finance degree why don't you work in corporate and stuff it's like i didn't want to work in a bank i didn't yeah. want to work in corporate mm-hmm. it's not going to feed my soul and i they have this feeling that like my soul is more valuable than a couple of bills you know and i think that's the yeah. hard part it's like to find that but also balance it so some mm-hmm. people they love bro i've met but some of my friends love their corporate lifestyle yeah. they love this they're they're behind the zoom meetings and they're like they're loving it they're in the environment they make good money they're mm-hmm. excited they can mm-hmm. support their family that's sick yeah you know awesome. some people love that and i, I see, don't see it a lot i'm not gonna lie <laughs> that, that's the thing you yeah. it, it, we don't we don't see it a lot because i think nowadays it's so like almost corporatized to not like it because they make it so unlikable you know it's mm-hmm. like it's hard to work with people like first you have to find people that you like working with right mm-hmm. you're mm-hmm. gonna deal with like the karens and the nancy's and the and the johns and whatever that are like sure. t- telling yeah. you like oh well by end of day could you get me this report and you're like no i can't get you that by end why of day. why don't you tell you're, me this a week ago you, you told me this at 3 30 <laughs> <laughs> end of day is in 30 minutes for yeah. me man like said it's due tomorrow <laughs> and it's one of the things where it's like okay the guy is obviously like annoying boss work right mm. but my dad always tells me the story where he worked under a guy in egypt as like he was an accountant and stuff for seven years this guy literally tried to get him fired like like prey on his downfall such a long and, time and my dad didn't quit right and you're thinking we're thinking like wow well, like, obviously we're like gen z like early we're like thinking bro i would have quit two years ago like yeah. I quit the first second he started disrespecting me yeah but it, yeah. to him it was a sense of if i quit this when things get hard in my life i'll quit something i'll quit something else mm-hmm. and like when times get hard sometimes you have to know when to like gut it out and yeah. when there's an op- next opportunity for you it's like a muscle and then when he found his next opportunity he jetted yeah <laughs> but yeah, the thing sure. is he got his get back because at the, by the end of that experience the guy because my dad was saying he's doing shady things yo he's doing he's moving he's moving he's moving vicious you know so he was like once like near the end he got ended up getting fired and then he gave my dad like the bonus payback for all the times he didn't get like his bonus or his pay Mm. that he deserved or like his rating that like i guess how the system worked in egypt and stuff Mm. and he's like then i got like the immigration to go to america so he was like and i got my get back and i took the money and left to to, to a new opportunity for sure and he said like that he was even though it sucked he goes that taught me resilience that taught Mm. me like grind it out even when it's hard the same way where i don't like coding 
but I'm going to do it because I love the mission. Mm -hmm. You know, and to him, his mission was the family goal, the mission of building himself, becoming the strongest man he can be. And those little things are really going to take you to that next level. Yeah, I agree. Um, building resilience is like, it's it, it really sucks, not going to lie. Um, <laughs> bro. But it's like working out, you know? It's yeah. literally a muscle. So mm -hmm. sometimes, like, it depends what you want to do. Are you in a, a point in your life where you want to build resilience? Do you have the resilience already? Don't go back to that job and, like, keep yeah. building re building resilience. You know, you're just wasting your time. Mm -hmm. What's, and so you have to de you have to define, like, where that, where that goal, like, is. Because mm -hmm. then, like, what, seven years? I'd say it's a good amount of time. Yeah. Then he, you know, and then, you know, good things started happening for your dad which is awesome mm -hmm. like that that is like a great scenario mm -hmm. but sometimes people's uh, journeys are like two years and yeah. sometimes they're 10 years exactly um and honestly when, maybe once you get to 10 years eh, i don't know how how worth it that is yeah you have to kind of have like these like quarterly check-ins and just like find, see what know. and nowadays even for our generation versus my dad's generation like mm -hmm. there's no such thing as company loyalty now like yeah people yeah. jump from jump job to job every two years but that's mm -hmm. what you have to do to increase your salary increase your career like people always say like, oh, like if you're at the same job for longer than two years, you're losing money on the table. Yeah. You know, where it's like you have to move on to the next spot unless you're getting those $10,000 raises every two years. 20. I wish it was different. Yeah. I wish it was like that where you could get like your $10,000 raise, you know, your however so many raises because mm -hmm. like, you know, obviously in, um, in the capital capitalistic world, mm -hmm. uh, we just care about the, stake, the, the shareholders. Yeah. Obviously. You know, they're the ones that provide the most value for the yeah. company, obviously. You know, <laughs> no, yeah. they no, they do not. They don't. You, they don't need to increase like a percentage or two of profit every single year. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, that money should be reinvested into the company. And you know what that means? Not just tools and like things that uh, and like operations. It literally means investing into your people. Mm -hmm. Like I, I would love for Sajon to take off so I can pay like my engineers more than what they they would get at another company. You mm -hmm. know, like a uh, obviously engineers make a lot of money, but like let's say like someone like a. Uh, I don't know, like a janitor or something. Mm -hmm. Like why I, I want them to love to to be set with what they have and then just like enjoy what they do. Like for example, um there is there's this famous like instance where I forget who it was. Someone was at NASA. They like talked to a janitor and they they asked them like what do you do for NASA? And instead of saying like he cleans toilets and like uh um you know cleans the bathroom or whatever, he just said I'm putting someone on the moon. Be and th yeah. that's a perfect example, you yeah. know. And uh, I hope he's part of the team. Whether people want to say, "Oh, he's not an astrophysicist," like he's no, on a mission, he's... and I hope he's gotten paid well, because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that—that's such a good, you know that that quote has been like everywhere. I've heard it on many podcasts. That's mm -hmm. very like famous. I hope he's good. Yeah, I hope you're good out there. <laughs> <laughs> and it kind of makes sense too, because like it goes back to that whole saying of like treat the CEO like the janitor, treat mm -hmm. this person like this person. And it's like however someone makes their honest living is how they're making their honest living. And like you yeah. said, like not everyone's going to be the CEO. Not everyone's going to mm -hmm. be the person who works the nine to five. Not everyone's going to be. It's like we all wear different hats. But it's they should like, be on a livable wage. You know, they 100%. should be getting paid well. Um, but uh, and if they're not, then they should really love their job. Yeah, it's like you really better love what you do to not get paid. And I think that's where it, becoming a founder or a CEO, like starting your own business comes in, right? Mm -hmm. Where you better be okay with not making money for the first however many years it takes to even make a single dollar. Take 15 years. You know what I mean? And yeah. there's so many people. Forever. There's some people that I met and they're like, oh, yeah, my parents built had a restaurant, but they didn't make money for the first seven years. Then the next seven years they made money, then they sold. So after 14 mm -hmm. years, they got that big payday that they had that yeah. vision for the first day. Mm -hmm. But it took those 14 years to get to the – now we sell and now we up. Yeah. You know? But who has the discipline? Who even has the discipline nowadays to grind for 14 years or well, for seven years and be losing money and then seven to 14 make money and then sell the 14th year? Like who even has that discipline anymore? Yeah. I mean, like, it's it's really hard to not only concentrate on a 15 minute YouTube video, like, <laughs> imagine, like, concentrating for 15 years. Yeah. Well, all 15 like, years, you got subway surfers above somebody head, like, yeah, that's going. a good idea, actually. Let's hit up uh, the Apple Vision Pro and yeah. just, like, add an, add an app Oof. on there, you know? What do you think about that, the Apple Vision Pro? I think it's cool. I mean, it's expensive. Um, I'm looking forward to the cheaper option, obviously, just like everyone else, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of, like, what it means for humanity, I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. There's a lot of, like, AI stuff that is, like, it's it's always, like, are we going to be the old heads that are, like, oh, back in my day, we used to blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And then it's, like, you, I, I think uh, with the new emerging technologies that are getting more popularized as time goes on, um, I'll, we're obviously going to receive a lot of benefits mm -hmm. and then we're going to give a lot of drawbacks too. you know, yeah. we're going to give things away for sure. So it's like, 
who's to decide like what the benefits, you know, if the benefits outweigh the drawbacks or vice versa. I mean, like personally, because we're, you know, humans haven't changed in such a long time. We haven't evolved for like a super, super long time. Mm-hmm. We were practically the same. That really what changes is the technology around us. And, like, and that's what's really changing. Like, and it's really changing fast. Yeah, fast. It's faster yeah. than we could even keep up. Like, yeah, there's no way like, the human brain was able to go swipe, 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 next, yeah. next, next. This uh, That's why even like nowadays, like there's like this whole single epidemic, right? Where mm-hmm. it's like, oh my God, why are everyone saying single? Because people aren't meeting people anymore. Because our third spaces are our phones. They're not, no one's going out. And then if they are going out, they're behind their phone, behind their phone. They're living in a different reality than in real life. And then it's hard to find people. It's hard to this because why? The illusion of choice. There's yeah. so many people I can access on the internet. There's yeah. so many people I can find or see. There's always something better out there. So then the human brain was not will- ready to co- like comprehend that experience. Yeah. So now everyone has this uh, analysis paralysis of not being able to make a decision. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it happens a lot. And uh, that's why like when you're building a product, you have to not only – you have to balance like – profit and then how uh people interact with it Mm -hmm. because like obviously the shareholders want to take it one way and maximize profit as much as possible yeah but then if you're thinking about your user like you can't you have to like build it around the human experience um and like obviously you can like improve certain features to kind of meet your quota whatever that is or Mm -hmm. like you can and you can also like kind of steer humanity in a different way yeah but at the same time we're always going to stay the same Mm -hmm. in terms of like our base like our needs like food you know water touch uh sight love Mm -hmm. right all the basic things that humans need that that's not really going to change so like if this technology kind of takes us away from like the amount of love that we're able to communicate between each other, that's not, it's not, I mean, it's just, maybe it's just not going to last, you Mm -hmm. know, maybe it's never going to be adopted. Um, but I think it's a good step in the right direction. Like I have you, do you watch anime at all? Sometimes, but my thing is I was, my, my intro to anime was Avatar The Last Airbender. So like some people might not call that like (laughs) yeah, hundred percent anime, anime. but it's so good though. It's such a good. That's show. my favorite show of all time. I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. I can't wait for the the reboot. I honestly like, especially because of what happened with the like that first movie, M Night Shyamalan. Uh, <laughs> like man. that man bugged. He tweaked. We, we don't talk about. Yeah, that. Like, he, <laughs> he tweaked. Like he <laughs> bugged out. But the new, like the new stuff, it actually kind of looks like a bit more accurate. Like the like, Katara talk actually looks like, sure. a little Inuit. You know, they actually have like this look. Like even His the Fire is... Nation, the scar looks more real. Yeah. Even like the animations of how they're using CGI, like Appa, mm-hmm. how he's flying through the sky. That was good. Obviously, it's not going to be the cartoon. The, 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 for sure yeah yeah the cartoons I mean, it's a live action there's not a lot of good live action tier like best thing but a live action that isn't too far off it's cool and they said that they're changing little bits of the story to add like a little bit of different flavor which i'm like okay why not because that's it's the product there the avatar airbender the original it's timeless it's already there it's perfect you don't have to touch that yeah yeah. you can have fun with it now it's like i feel like that is where you could be a little creative m night shaman like tried to have way too much fun with that yeah he was doing stuff and i'm looking at i'm like he was like Ong now, isn't it? You know, the, he changed his name the whole time. I'm saying like, like I, was, I was getting mad. Like I'm sitting there like, all right. Every time they say Ong, Ang, <laughs> <laughs> you're just like in the background. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's also like uh, the the way that they did firebending in that in the in that movie. Yeah, trash. It looks it looks so silly. It like I'm so like ridiculous. the thing is like even like the earth bending. It's like ten people to move the littlest rock slowly yeah. through the air. I'm like. Okay, like that just looks terrible. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's a YouTube channel that looks at movies and is like movie sins. Yeah, cinema sins. Yeah, cinema yeah, sins. Yeah, 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 such a funny show. My girlfriend never watched uh, the live action, the mm-hmm. the Shemlama, and uh, but like I showed her that YouTube video, and I was like, just watch this. This, he, is, bro, he this was is the clip, whole movie. He was clipping the whole, like he was roasting the whole, the whole projection. Movie. Like he was just like. Ding, 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 the whole movie was yeah. just a sin. <laughs> Sometimes uh, I don't like those videos, though, because it's just like him picking up that water. Sin. Like, what? <laughs> but that's Relax. what makes his like his content very authentic, like, oh, too. Oh, I see, yeah. Or, like, one of my favorite things about his content is when he's like, um, roll credits. When, like, they say the name of the movie or, like, the show oh, yeah. in the show, he's like, roll credits. Like, that's it. Like Because uh, my cousin just explains to me. She was like, there's something in writing, because she was, like, a literature English major, and she was explaining. She was like, you have to make the watcher, the reader, earn that title like you have to make them earn mm. that thing like the build-up needs to be earned so when it's roll credits like the reason why it's like in the beginning he gives the they say the title like mad cheesy or corny in like the first 15 20 minutes like you didn't give me anything to earn that thing mm. you know it's like but if you allow it to build and it's then it's like boom the title or like in a funny oh, way oh yeah then it does a build-up to why it was called that yeah you know so i do like, like that yeah and it's, it's a build-up she explained to me in like literature that's what you're supposed to do but she's like oh. sometimes it's cheap like they make it cheap which is why that guy mm. probably was like roll credits yeah you know uh, have you ever seen um oh man what's it called 
Uh, they roll. Cra- oh, Invincible. Mm. It's a uh, it's an animated the, show. I was on the French movie. Amazon Prime. <laughs> no. Oh, it's like a French movie. The Invincible. So it was like a guy in a wheelchair. And he was moving. Or no, it's uh, I think it's it's voiced by um, Stephen Yoon. I think. Okay. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, uh, what's it? you ever watch uh, The Walking Dead? Yes. He's the guy that died that everyone was really sad about. They all die. Uh, the, the, the really sad one. The uh, Asian guy. Yeah, I forget what his name yes, was. Yes, 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 yes. I yeah, yeah. That that actor. And then uh, J- uh, Jonah Jameson from like Spider-Man. Like the, oh, the, yeah. He, he's the dad. <laughs> Give me a picture he, of Spider-Man. He, he, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he voices the dad. So he, uh, it's, it's, it's an anime show. It's really good. Um, but anyways, uh, in the show, uh, they don't have like the title credits like at the at the beginning mm-hmm. or the title you know what the splash yeah, yeah, yeah. that comes out. Um, it's usually like I don't know fifteen minutes into the episode and it's only in conversation. Since the show is called Invincible, mm-hmm. every time they're like, "Oh man, you're," and then it'll Invincible. And then every single episode is different because the conversations are always mm-hmm. different all the time. So it's like it's a creative way to do it. It feels good. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, I feel a lot more like satisfied when when a show like does does something like like that. actually builds up to mm-hmm. this person is that. It's so good. Ah, it's, it's like so good. and the human again, like you said, humans we're not changing. Yeah, yeah. We like what we like for a mm-hmm. reason. There's a biological framework for mm-hmm. why we like what we like. The same way there's yeah. something like color psychology. Why red is more energetic. It's more about speed or this and or when you see things that are that are purple, it's a color of royalty. You see green, it's earth, nature. There's a reason right. for like the color psychology. Yeah. Same yeah, reason yeah. why like you see certain colors together and you kind of get like taken aback because it's mm-hmm. poisonous. That's why dart frogs mm. are different colors. What, what colors are they? They're these weird neon-looking, yeah. crazy-looking colors, crazy. and they ha- they're spotted. So when you see that in nature, you kind of get taken aback. So when you see it in real life, even if it's not, you kind of same get taken aback because mm. incl- you have an inclination to worry about why why that color like that. Yeah, <laughs> why you yeah, look yeah. like this? Yeah, honestly, you bringing that up made me think about like uh, drugs because <laughs> <laughs> drugs because <laughs> honestly, uh, what's it called? The uh, like so like they're super like crazy colors, right? Mm-hmm. But when you and when you think of like neon, you're mm-hmm. usually thinking about like nightlife, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's like a direct correlation from like these crazy neon looking frogs to like uh, having neon like all around the nightclub, and then just yeah. like you know doing crazy drugs. Because um, there's also I don't know if you know about the toad. Um, you can like scrape like I think it's like some sort of like saliva off its back, mm-hmm. let it like frost up. Somehow there's like some science behind it, mm-hmm. and then you can smoke it. What? And it's like smoking toads. Yeah, smoking. Yeah, <laughs> that toad pack. Whoever figured it out, <laughs> it's like grab that toad. <laughs> just like start. Yeah, they they figured it out, and it's it, it, it does some crazy hallucination stuff. Because mm-hmm. um, they like, have like different like chemicals. Because it's like different chemicals on the mm-hmm, toads, mm-hmm. like back to help it like maintain moisture, like basically protect itself and stuff. So yeah, I'm assuming it's a poison, mm-hmm. and then uh, once you like let it frost up, like dry, um, mm-hmm. and then you scrape it up. And then smoke it like that's gives you some fucking crazy high, right? Science, man. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> People, the thing is, it's so funny because you know it's like if they only put their time behind something more useful, like what would they have done? Yeah. It's like to them that was what they were passionate about. That, yeah, and whoever the mom was that was disappointed in them, like <laughs> just let her be disappointed because he changed the world. Yeah. He, he or she, he, they were smoking you know. that toad pack. They were, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which they were distributing of... it. The first drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird too because like even when it comes down to like the end of it where it's like when you go through like all these little things right like the mm-hmm. creatives right like the movie mm-hmm. the person right the cinema sins like all these different things the toad right all these mm-hmm. different things it kind of goes to show you like literally the li- the limitlessness of human kind yeah like we're literally allowed to do so much and so and mm-hmm. we have this free will and then it even goes to the apple vision pro right back to that and it, where it's like i'm worried if someone asked me like oh would you like would you did you get one yeah. i'm like dude I know that if I like allow myself to immerse in this society, I know it look cool. I know it looks like in a it's an environment where you're home, you open up multiple screens, you're mm-hmm. hearing this, like, something's coming at you. Like imagine how good it's gonna get, or it almost feels like you're there. Like that's such a real immersive experience. But every time I put, I put on my VR headset once, mm-hmm. literally one time, mm-hmm. and I literally played the silliest game. It was like you had a sword and you're just like, cutting blocks, oh, or like okay. there was like a shooting game, and like you're shooting and you're dodging bullets, you're dodging bullets. Mm-hmm. But then I'm telling you, my heart rate started to increase. Yeah, like, yeah. I felt like I was really dodging things, yeah. and if I got hit, ah, 
like well we're, we're really visual creatures so like if that thing is filling up most of your peripheral and it's reacting to like your body movements and your motion i mean that's practically like there's most of our senses right yeah there. or at least those are the most important ones that um, you feel usually. that you feel to the brain like neurologically right like you mm-hmm. said you feel like you haven't there. changed mm-hmm. so what is that really going to do neurologically to our brains to our society mm-hmm. and then i'm seeing people in this like the subway using it i'm like you look crazy going like this you look crazy and i'm like and it's a giant thing but imagine when it's just a pair of glasses yeah, you know what I mean. They That's gonna be nice because the tech is gonna get better and better for sure. So it's not gonna get worse. Like mm-hmm. the first iPhone was well, like what a big bl- a big brick. The biggest first phone was like a giant phone like this. Yeah, the sure. first computer was the size of this room. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. But the now what's a computer could be literally like in our hands. This tiny little phone. What's amazing to me is that um, thing that we're we're really just taking the resources around us and creating something just like out of this world. Like mm-hmm. I saw some some TikTok recently that was like, "Who looked at this?" And it was like a mountain and like I don't know grass. It was just like the wilderness, and they were like, "Ah, Bluetooth." <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> and Wi-Fi. <Yeah. laughs> you know? Who? How did you? You mm-hmm. know. The fact that we're able to get this advanced with only the resources we have at our, um, you know, that, that we're able to acquire is, mm-hmm. is crazy. Um, it's just about figuring it out. And uh, I hope that we're able to figure out the right things, though. Yeah. I don't know if we really need VR. That's the thing. It's like we're not – we're already living behind the screens in our phones. But now our attention and our phone use is only going to increase more. Mm-hmm. Our time behind a computer, laptops, work, it's mm-hmm. always behind a computer now. Mm-hmm. And that's where, like, the future businesses are. Like, for example, like, the brick-and-mortar businesses, yeah, they're always going to exist. But this thing is, is that we're at the point where it's like they, those businesses have matured so much that like, you really have to come up with something ingenious to really take over mm-hmm. market share in something like even machinery. Like you really have to come up with some brand new machinery tech, but then use robots to fix it for you. Use tech and software. Like Tesla isn't a really a car company. It's more mm-hmm. of a software company than it is a car company. Like, and people don't realize that. It's like, this isn't just a car company. They have, there are mm-hmm. softwares that makes them incredible. That's what really takes them to the next level. Mm-hmm. But then you're sitting there thinking like, okay, so if I want to have a different type of business, where do I have to do it? Okay, why do I want to be a content creator? Mm-hmm. Because the attention is there. That is where attention is. Mm-hmm. If I'm able to garner 100,000 people to view a post every time and love everything I do and I sell something for $10 now I'm monetizable I can make money off these people who really like my content cool but then it's like to even get to that level what do you have to do right Mm -hmm. are you gonna sit there and do little dancing TikToks and trends and use your attractiveness to gain views and followers and sell your body and kind of show a little skin here and there or are you gonna do it the slow grind where you're just trying to educate people but then even if you're educating people with really good content you have to have spent years Mm-hmm. In that field of education, of like yeah. whatever it is that you're educating on. Like you said, like the car detailing. He, has, he probably hasn't been doing it for one day, two days. No, he's been doing it for, been doing it for a couple years now. A couple yeah. years. So he now has the ability to show people, hey, this is what I'm doing mm-hmm. and promote that. But again, it took still years of knowledge, learn, growth, right? Failures, like you were saying, like fail this, fail that way. But then that you're failing forward versus yeah. now let's put on this Apple Vision Pro, lock in as my six year. See, I have a six year old daughter and then I'm sitting here just doing what you know i'm locked in she's locked in and she's really gonna meet friends on it in real life is she gonna ride her bike and get a a scab on her knee how soft are we gonna become because falling Mm. down and scabbing your knee is important for growth it is yeah it is if 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 you're constantly there's there's no such thing as an up if there's no down you know um you can't just keep going up and up and up uh in terms of like uh like feeling good you can't always be feeling good you have to feel bad sometimes yeah so you, you you learn there there are good things that come from feeling bad um like scraping your knee mm-hmm. it sure hurts but that just means you won't you know you don't ride your bike that way stupid mm-hmm. <laughs> you're gonna or say that to your daughter <laughs> <laughs> like stupid what you do <laughs> yeah but even then like it also protects you from uh bacteria and stuff too like where you know it's like mm. you, to get the best way to like heal from sickness is to get sick sometimes mm-hmm. like sometimes you have to get sick to heal then you have immunity to whatever you got sick from but that could also be like a really old view because mm-hmm. like let's say you just put us in a box and we're not exposed to any bacteria and we we don't have to improve our immune systems or anything. But then the second you step out of that box, you're toast. You never have to step out the box. You got never Amazon now. Everything delivers to you. You don't even need to eat. Just inject it but into is, your into your body. But is, you know? would that be life then? Well, it depends because uh, what's it called? If right, right now what we consider life is what we currently have, right? Like mm-hmm. outside of like technology and blah blah blah, like mm-hmm. you know our reactions and stuff. Uh, what we consider life is because of our current limitations or mm-hmm. our current experience. Mm-hmm. So if you are able to replicate this in like a different world, like virtually, and your your physical body's in a box, but you mentally are somewhere else, and everyone else is there, that sounds like life. Yeah, but then 
it's it's a super sci-fi and it's super yeah, future. Yeah. So it's like so, life. Okay, so if it's life, but the life is a new s- version of life, right? You're saying like yeah, yeah, and it could be better because there's no you know you don't get there's no disease. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't get hurt. So you can make as many mistakes. Actually, you can make as many mistakes as possible while you're figuring out what you actually want to do, and mm-hmm. you just won't feel bad about it. But you're seeing it in the lens of greatest potential good of that situation. Yeah, right? yeah. To get there is going to be really, really like you're thinking of it as hard. like the best thing. But most people, again, yeah, but are, it's, how the subway surface yeah, above the yeah. thing because they're too distracted to sit there and listen to something. It's really that a dystopia. You know what I mean? So it's kind of, and then sooner or later it ends up like Wally, and you yeah, got and much. you got people on these. Uh, yeah, little machines yeah. moving them. The, the drinks come to them. Oh, put man. it down. Yeah, it sounds so nice, but in it's, life, anytime really, there's yeah. ease given, it creates weak people. Mm-hmm. Right? Ease doesn't create strength. That's why it's like the tests, the trials, the tribulations makes the strong person. And it's like, okay, I want to be really successful. I want to be really strong. I want to be this. I want to be that. But then you have to have done really hard things that suck to get to that level. Mm-hmm. Right. So the same way where it's in, then if we have this sense of ease, like you're saying, yeah, it's still life. But the life is now a life of people who can't really do anything besides yeah. get things done for them. And granted, there's certain things that are great. Right. Like, oh, yeah. there's AIs that will do this for me that I don't have to waste my time doing. It'll sort through 3000 pages and articles and give me the most highlighted point of each page. Mm. Bet. That's saving me so much time. That does sound good. Yeah, you know, yeah. that sounds great. But yeah. then it's like this: it's like the calculator killed mental math, right? Mm-hmm. No one does mental math anymore. Enough so. Analog clocks aren't really taught in middle schools anymore. Why are we reading an analog clock? You have the digital clock everywhere. It's easier. It makes sense, right? Why are we even teaching cents like a penny, a dime, a nickel when everything's gonna be cashless, mm. right? So it's like there's things that are changing as we see it, right? Mm-hmm. But then I had this conversation with my brother. And I was saying, like, okay, chat GPT. Mm-hmm. What is it really solving? Okay, it's solving a lot of, like, painless mind staking work. It helps you kind of brainstorm back and forth with yourself almost, mm-hmm. which is cool. All right. But then what calculators did, like, what like, calculators did to mental math, mm-hmm. chat GPT is then due to, like, thinking. Yeah. You know? And wh- who knows? The thinking is a skill in and of itself, right? right. The thinking is a way bigger skill than mental math if we, we had to sit there and argue about it. That's so true. Then, That's true. What category are we going down? People who then in five, ten years who can't critically think? There might be there, there, there might be a point where it becomes too much for sure. Because like if you take a step back and you look like in the past, in the past, um, writing didn't exist at some point technically. Mm-hmm. It wasn't super easy to write at least. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you had to learn. Like, <laughs> Well, people were able to – no, you just straight up weren't able to write. People did not write things down. You mm-hmm. know, they, you don't have paper back then. It was storytelling. Yeah, like, it was storytelling. Were storytelling. And people telling. were able to like remember the Odyssey, for example, like mm-hmm. super long like stories. Mm-hmm. And uh, we lost that you know, over time. Um, and I think uh, – what's it called – now that we're like losing, we're we're kind of losing the ability to think, or we're we're definitely losing our attention span. Yeah, hundred percent. But like, are we gaining anything with that? That's what I want to know. Yeah, it's you like know? what's the what's the offset of losing this, gaining this? Like, what's the yeah. end game pro and con like meta that we're gonna be again entering? It seems like we're kind of getting to that like uh, the highest point where you you sh- you shouldn't you shouldn't lose your attention span. You know, what are you gaining from losing your attention span? What, what really like what you're gaining is you're able to concentrate on different things. And mm-hmm. when I say concentrate, I mean consider because you can't concentrate very long if you have yeah. a short attention span. Mm-hmm. But like, uh, you know, on social media, for example, we see all these different problems going uh, going on in the world. Um, and so that means you're able to give your input into every single problem. That's cool. Maybe that could be useful for someone. But then, uh, you know, a lot of people end up being chronically online. Yeah. And so when they're chronically online, they become what, social justice warriors. Yeah. It's, it's like a fine line. And they like, get this group think. They enter yeah. group think. And gr- entering group think is low-key kind of dangerous because that's what a cult is. <laughs> for sure. For sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, but it's like the cult of the internet. Like, yeah. It, it is a cult now. Group think is important, but it, it, it can lead you down the wrong path for yeah. sure. Yeah. that's why, like, groups can, like, be become like mobilized pretty quickly on the internet right like mm-hmm. trends what are trends it's basically the biggest sense of group think where yeah. we all do this one thing together and then we're all listening and doing it even when yeah. things pop off like it's sick it's cool we're trying all something new but then it goes to this point where then who's really having an original thought anymore who's really doing something where they're like i thought about this because i was sitting outside in the grass for 15 minutes with my feet in the grass just yeah. thinking thinking quiet like and i someone asked me this question like a year ago and it genuinely like changed my outlook on things and it allowed me to like really start enjoying my alone time more and they were like how long can you sit in silence 
Oh man, and th- th- I literally was, I thought about it. I'm like, you know, like, ego. You're like, oh, I can sit in silence. That would be hard, right? Like, I could do it. No, but like, think how long. And I'm sitting there thinking genuinely. Okay, like, how long could I theoretically have you tried it? There? I have, and yeah. I've. It's, it was weird. It was very weird was the weird. first time I did it because I was. I think I was like, I was like, let me do 15 minutes. I was like, let me do 15 minutes of night, and I try like a meditation, right? But like, I was like, all right, let me just silent, like not even think, not even talk, not even think to myself. Just try to like have nothing going on, right? Mm-hmm. And when I was doing it, I was like, after like two minutes, I'm like, I'm so bored. I'm so bored. I'm so bored. I'm so bored. What am I doing? What am I doing? I'm like, bro. And like in my me- – like mentally, I was like, wow. It took two minutes for me to think like, well, I want to think Did about – Did you say two minutes? It took me two minutes to think like <laughs> I want to do something else or I want to do something. Yeah, and yeah. Then, and again, I was trying. Like I was mentally, sure. mentally thinking like, nah, let me do this. But then after eight minutes, it got a little easier. All right? It's like mm. that grind of like the longer you kind of stay in, the more mm, locked mm-hmm. in you get. When I got to 15 minutes or I had a timer just to see like can I do it for 15 minutes? And I did, and after those fifteen minutes, I sat there like open, like kind of like obviously, like I was just kind of thinking and stuff. And then I, I thought I sat there longer, just like literally. De- I had never been so deep in thought that first time in a while, and I was just like, "Yeah, wow, it's really nice." Like we really don't just sit in silence. Yeah, and that's crazy because like, what's the like you said? What's the incentive of sitting in silence? But like, there is there's no productivity going on when you're sitting in silence. There's no sense of I'm grinding or I'm looking at content or I'm consuming something. But what I did was I like dissociated myself from needing to do something people forget that rest is just as important as uh executing Mm -hmm. and like um and doing something like uh you you need to rest and when people take breaks nowadays from their work they go from work to their phone Mm -hmm. and so they're they're mentally still stimulated like when's the last time you were using the bath you were taking a shit (laughs) and you (laughs) were yeah right when's the last time bring your phone didn't bring your phone yeah i literally came (laughs) Keep referencing TikTok. I came across a TikTok that was like me when I forget my phone to go use the bathroom, and it was like they're dressed as a pilgrim and yeah. like sweeping. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just so ridiculous. Churning butter. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, when's the last time you did that? Yeah, it's it's crazy because like I'll even catch myself like when I'm like, why am I bringing my phone? Like it's like oh, I can open up, I can open up a game while I'm sitting down, or I can do. This. Yeah. I'm like. Why am I bringing my phone here to do this? Like when now this phone could be dirty now because I'm sitting here doing something in the bathroom. It's That's like, true. And it's these things, and it's like we don't even think about it, but it's such mm-hmm. a synonymous part of our lives now. Where we walk around with it twenty four seven. It's yeah. attached at the hip, you know. Yeah, it's 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 so. Uh, moral of the story: uh, don't don't have your phone on you all the time. You know. Yeah. Really. Disconnect in some way. If yeah. You can. Even if it's uh, having a conversation with someone walking outside i have a dog mm-hmm. so it, it makes it easier to force myself outside of the house at least twice a day like mm-hmm. for 10 minutes a day just That's walking more than nothing you know mm-hmm. um but like uh some people don't have that they just stay inside all day mm-hmm. and then they're like oh man why am i depressed and it's well, just why like, am i sad have you exercised no do you eat well no do you go outside no have you given your your uh your mind a chance to rest today no have you been on tiktok all day yes well, I mean, you there's know, your not, answer. Not like, yeah. <laughs> have you have you hydrated today? Not yeah. Not like it's always that easy. <laughs> have you drank but, water today? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like, not to like make fun of them. You you really do like because we all do it. We all you, you get in those moments. Yeah, yeah, you get in trance. Sometimes I'm. I, I used to be on TikTok for like all day. Mm-hmm. That's why I needed that like restriction by my girlfriend. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, it wasn't her idea. It was mine. <laughs> <laughs> but, Just letting you know. It's like you know. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was my idea. And honestly, it's, it's helped a lot. I, low key, sometimes I, I hop on YouTube and then I'll go to shorts. Uh, it's, it's just not as good. So I, I, I don't get as like addicted. Mm-hmm. I'll do it for like 10 minutes. And I'm like, damn, this is trash. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's weird too because like it's just hard because like we were the generation who grew up a little bit without the internet and then grew up mm-hmm. into it with the mm-hmm. internet. Because again, uh, I remember sixth grade, I'm using Facebook Messenger and I'm like talking to people in class. Do you, still not, do you not use Facebook Messenger? I do not oh, use Facebook That's cool. Yeah, yeah, me neither. So I'm sitting there talking in the chat like, hey, what's up? How are you? Yeah. And I'm looking at back at the old message. I'm like, I sound like a dork. Like, what am I saying? Oh, but, yeah. But it was funny. I remember even playing games on Facebook. Like, you got Farmville, mm, Ninja Wars. Like, mm-hmm. those are fun games. But now they don't think they exist. But they were good times. And so people actually use the internet to have fun. But the thing is, when I got off the computer, I said BRB or AFK, I actually was AFK or BRB. That's because true. you couldn't be locked in. You had to go to the computer, the one computer in the house. Now we have computers, all of us in our hands. And a tablet. And an iPhone. And an iPhone. And, a, and the TV and this and us Apple TV is smart play and you have the, all these things that are connecting us so like you're never really offline so how do you really yeah. become offline how do you really get that 15 minutes of silence where you're not thinking and I think that's something in our society that we kind of are entering this really dangerous thing and we're seeing the effects mm-hmm. like visually vis- like visually we're seeing the effects and then after COVID whew, that yeah. thing went downhill even more mm-hmm. and like the the only 
you know, when you're growing up, uh, the the person that controls your screen time is your parents, mm-hmm. right? But if they're us, and they're also on TikTok, and we and can't control just, it, and we can't control it, you know, like we we have to lead by example. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, whenever you find yourself just like on your phone for too long. You know, throw it across the room. Yeah. Like honestly, I do that. Like my couch is like over in the corner, so I'll just like throw my phone over there when I just like find myself on it for too long. And dude, sometimes like you know, like that feeling you get, that gut feeling, you're like, damn, I just spent like two hours like scrolling. Yeah. What am I doing? Like, have you ever uh, done that and then been like, that was good, that felt nice? No. Genuinely, no. Like I've done that a couple times, (laughs) but only it's it's because like I have a a super busy day, and Mm -hmm. then I really want to like unwind. It's not really unwinding, but like I just want to like feel good or entertainment or like get something going. So sometimes I'll do it for like an hour or two, and I'm like, ah, that was good. And then and then I'm like, you know, that's like a healthy relationship. I think for me, like the that limit for me goes to like thirty minutes, like a day. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I mean? Like that limit for me, like. Anything after that, I feel like I'm wasting my time. Even if, like, like, obviously my, like, For You page Mm -hmm. is all, like, good content. Like, nothing crap. So, like, I'm learning constantly on it or, like, I'm seeing cool, like, Islamic lectures or a a podcast about Mm -hmm. this or Mm -hmm. this. And I'm – or soccer content. It's cool little edits. And I'm, like, watching this video of, like, old uh, Ronaldo playing or old Messi playing or Ronaldinho. And I'm, like, oh, I love this. But then I'm also thinking it's cool. I'm in entertainment. I'm enjoyed. Like 30 minutes, usually like my limit I've noticed. Mm. If anything more than that, I start feeling like, what am I doing? Like I should be doing this. Because then I look at my planner and I'm like, yo, there's things to get done today. What am I doing sitting here doing this? Like unless I'm using it for like pot good, mm. even though if I am, I'm like, I can't spend too much time doing that because at some point it's not just entertainment. It's also like sucking me into this reality mm. that isn't my real life. So does it uh, does it make you feel... I I know you said like oh man like what am I doing I should be doing something else but does that like affect your mental in a way because think about this like who said I have to do something else you know like who said I have to go make money who said I have to go do this like what's the rules behind the system but it's like like you said we were talking about before humans like regardless we're inclined to like doing things that are hard and succeeding at it we get the craziest kick out of out of doing something (laughs) like that right we love the idea yeah. of making our meal and eating it like you know how it's like food tastes better when like you make it it's like food tastes better when someone's making it for you right like mm-hmm. it's like you feel like they made it with love mm-hmm. right it's, it's like this, intentional it's that same feeling of like you can, and sometimes you know how you could tell if someone made it with love or they just like splatter things around like right? yeah when yeah, the yeah. person at the chipotle line you're talking to them you're like how's your day they're like loading it up and they're making it with love they're putting the rice the beans it's like a whole culinary yeah, experience so much better yeah you feel better and like you almost feel the love back and forth mm-hmm. that's why it's like so there's probably someone spitting in your food if you're sitting there being rude to the person behind the yeah. behind like the headset. And I'm just like, that's why it's, again, it's like whatever you're doing, be intentional, mm-hmm. right? Like you said, you enjoy that time behind that TikTok of scrolling a little bit because you're being intentional about it. I want to do this to re- unwind, even like you said, like you're not unwinding 100%, but mm-hmm. to have entertainment. But right? you can be intentional about it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, mm-hmm. you, like you grabbing your phone without thinking and then hopping on on TikTok and then just being stuck there for an hour. That's not intentional. That's mm-hmm. going to make you feel like shit. Mm-hmm. But if you're like, I'm going to take a break and yeah, maybe I'll give myself 15 minutes to just not do anything. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to spend like the next 30 minutes yeah. on TikTok or the yeah. next two hours if you really yeah. want to because you, you got the time. Make sure you set that mental intention like, I want to do this. This is what yeah. I want yeah, to be yeah. doing. Yeah. Because then like it's it's like it's like these – this it, even though it's um, just like a mental switch mm-hmm. and you can't really like uh, – what's the word? Like um, – you can't really not exercise it. Um, you can't measure it. Mm-hmm. Um, and people, are, people are like, "Oh, you should just be stronger." Blah blah blah. No, like this, this like small mental switch uh, makes a big difference in mm-hmm. the way that you feel about yourself. No, I liked it a lot. So I kind of wanted to ask you, like, overall, when it comes down to like the future in the next five years, like, what are things like you're seeing that we should go, we're gonna end up going down, and what do you think that we're kind of like mm. eek? <laughs> Yeah, ah, uh, man. Uh, in the next five years, it's hard to tell within the next one year. Before the podcast, yeah. you and I were talking about the the new like AI tool, that, Sora. Yeah, Sora. And like last year, the AI it just looked crazy different. Mm-hmm. Look up. Uh, you, you, did you see it? Uh, w- Will Smith eating spaghetti. Yeah, and it's like he's like it looks terrible, is demented looks in this. Yeah, but yeah. now it's like a crystalline, beautiful photo, and it looks, it looks amazing. Real. And I'm like, mm-hmm. this is someone recording this. No, this is AI. This is looks it. almost real. Yeah, you just give it a prompt of like a thing, and then I was telling someone like, imagine being able to like write stories or books just through that and making your own movies. Mm-hmm. No director, no film, no lighting, no nothing pay zero dollars yeah yeah now you have this whole experience 
Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I, I the, the the benefit here is that like AI is enabling people to work on uh, is is enabling more people to do more things. Mm-hmm. You can be a director. You can have actors without other people. You can uh, add music without other people because AI makes music now too. Yeah. Um, so at least in the creative economy, you don't need a whole team anymore. You really just need yourself, I guess, some discipline and uh, like a vision and knowing how to use every tool. So it kind of like creates. It kind of makes everyone like a more entrepreneurial in a way. Mm-hmm. You know, now all these huge companies, you don't really need that to exist anymore. Um, obviously, they they're gonna fight for the control. Uh, no matter but, what. No matter what. But like. The gig, the gig economy was uh, enabled by and has grown because of the internet and because of all this, these social network platforms and stuff like that. AI is, I think, enabling people to just do the things they want to do, mm-hmm. which is what my passion is. Yeah. So, like, it makes me feel good when I see other people using these tools to just make their life. Like, for example, like, Saijon wouldn't have taken off um, when it did if ChatGPT didn't come out. Because mm-hmm. I had the idea for Cy John back in college. Mm-hmm. So it took like four years of me being like, yeah, I'm working on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. But I wasn't working on it. I was like on my phone. Mm-hmm. And like maybe I'd be sitting in front of the computer trying to work on it, but I couldn't concentrate long enough. And it's because I didn't have someone with me. Mm-hmm. So anyways, long like story. Like an assistant or like someone's like push that boundary back, have, and forth, having, back and forth. Having someone there, something, someone, mm-hmm. chat GPT. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> when you tell, when you tell chat, <laughs> when you tell chat GPT, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Who am I apologizing sorry, to? I love you. <laughs> yeah, so uh, having ChatGPT there to bounce ideas off of, correct my code, tell me why the code, make it easier for me to code, code for me, and then have me like correct it and like do. If it wasn't for ChatGPT um, to being there for me, mm-hmm. then uh, Sidejohn wouldn't be where it is right now because it's so hard to like kickstart something by yourself. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you can convince other people to join you, like that's great. Um, but it's hard to have other people join you when you have nothing to show for it. Mm-hmm. So ChatGPT allowed me to get to the base level, which is where Sajon is now. Mm-hmm. And now I have two co-founders. Um, onboarding another intern, so I'm going to have two interns. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I have my own little team now, which is kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, I wouldn't imagine a year ago I'd be where I am now. Um, not like the platform is doing well for itself right now. You know, mm-hmm. it's not. It's, it's in growth really stage. Yeah, well, you're growing. But it's in the growth stage. You know, mm-hmm. I'm figuring out. I'm getting PMF. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm like figuring out all these things. Um, and it all, and it, it all started because, because of ChatGPT. Mm-hmm. Honestly, yeah. So like, if, if AI is able to do that for so many other people, like the gig economy is going to explode. The economy is going to change for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, most, more most people are. Hopefully, the, I saw a statistic by like a certain thing of the. 60 to 7% of people are going to be in gig economy work within like tw- so a couple of years. I bet. And I, I don't doubt it because honestly, it makes more sense. Why would I not be my own worker, quote unquote, a contract worker of doing things, spending time doing things that I want to do versus I have to work this time, this time and only get paid this much? Yeah, the problem is that, uh, um, you know, we were talking about school earlier, uh, being that the school system isn't set up for people to be entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. And I, I think this is pretty well known. It's not even a conspiracy theory anymore. No, no, no. It's just true. Yeah. <laughs> it's just true. And uh, it's, it's going to be weird because there's so much education online now that just allows you to learn almost anything um, for relatively cheap. Uh, so, like, do you put your kid through the school system? Or do you put them onto online courses and like and YouTube, other courses? And YouTube University. Yeah, and through YouTube. I mean, not through YouTube University, but like it put them into like some sort of interactive school that kind of mm-hmm. like takes a different route or a different approach, which is more about like entrepreneurship, about like leveraging tools. And, and actually learning AI. things that matter. You know, like imagine if yeah. every kid was like actually learning things that you can tell they're passionate about. Mm-hmm. Like I always, I always had this idea, right? And I'm looking at things like, okay, say someone wants to become a doctor. Mm-hmm. They love medicine. They want to help people, whatever. Yeah. Why are we not just putting them directly in, like, not med school, but, like, learning about that when they're 16, 17, like, mm. and getting them on a fast track to it instantly so that they're doctors by the time they're 22? Yeah, I wonder what the thought what, is. What, what's the point of gen eds? What's the point of all that stuff if the theoretical end goal is for them to be doctors? Rounding out your your person. But at the end of the day, I've met some doctors. I've met people in PhDs. I've met some people at these highest levels. Not even that, dude. They are so locked in and focused on one specific topic that they're mm, an expert on and true. a genius on. Mm-hmm. They don't they don't have skills in this, that, or this, that. They don't care about it. Regardless, mm. they end up forgetting it and not even doing it anyway. So at the so end of the day. Just let them lock in earlier. <laughs> like they know what they yeah. want to do. Let them do it. 
that was the idea for um what's it called elon's uh school do you mm-hmm. know about that I, heard, I saw things about it but also he's also like a wild case he's pretty wild yeah, yeah. for sure i mean i mean he, he's smart for sure but he's he's a crazy dude <laughs> but it, i mean like you know to be that smart i guess you got to be crazy yeah i Listen, uh, genius and insanity. There's like a little layer in between that's kind yeah. of <laughs> going back and forth for sure. But anyways, he uh, he his idea for a school was essentially like you know from the get go, mm-hmm. figure out what the kid wants to do, um, and outside of like uh, what's it called, or, like organizing the curriculum around that specific kid, not having any grades. Mm-hmm. I I don't know about grades, but not having like uh, like uh, what's the word. Oh, grades in terms of like year one, year two, like third, oh, like right? a metric of now you're the next year. Now. Yeah, yeah. You just keep advancing. You just as keep you advancing. Advance. Yeah, and you advance as fast as you possibly can. can. Yeah. So it doesn't limit the student. Like you're saying, I'm sitting there bored in second grade. Like, so it's tailored by the student. I don't know how it works. Um, and I know nothing about it. I, actually, I've heard that it, it hasn't been doing well. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's probably maybe because of technology, maybe because of this and that or whatever. But the idea is good. You mm-hmm. know, tailor the education to the kid. Um, have them work towards the thing that they want to learn and the thing that they want to get good at. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, honestly, if any, if it if it's a f- failure at the end of the day, it's a great experiment. We're mm-hmm. going to learn so much about like just how kids it, learn. Yeah, and making it applicable progress. to the kid. Mm-hmm. Like you're saying, like I kind of like that idea, but also I think what it's what's what someone could counter that with and be like, well, what does a kid know, right? What does a kid know about what they want to do, right? It's true, I mean, which is true, but yeah. at least they're. They're learning a basis. Like, obviously, you need a basis of everything. Mm-hmm. Then the kid is learning these bases of everything. But if we're being honest, I could have told you that, like, if you looked uh, old me and then future me and told me that I would be doing something like this, mm-hmm. I would believe you. Because mm-hmm. it's like, I love talking to people. I love being entrepreneurial, making money any which way I can mm-hmm. and finding ways to s- stack chips in, like, mm-hmm. different types of ways. Even when I was in high school, I was doing, like, little things. Where I'm like, okay, how can I save money this way? How can I do this? I always love that that energy, right? And then that's fair. I wouldn't be surprised to see where I am now. That makes sense, you know. But mm-hmm. then it's like I knew that I didn't like math. I knew I didn't like to code. Why? I took mm-hmm. an AP computer science class, mm-hmm. and I did I did the work. Right? I was sitting there doing the this string, this and bracket, and this. <laughs> and I was sitting there like looking at it, like okay, now I have this robot moving in this digital thing. That's One cool. step to the left. Okay, nice. Uh, I'm like tried. I tried so much, but I knew I didn't like it. Yeah. So great. I stopped. I completely didn't do it anymore. That's good. Because honestly. I knew I didn't like it. I knew I didn't want to sit behind a computer mm-hmm. and do that. Mm-hmm. Same thing when I have a finance degree, but I didn't want to work in a bank. You know, I I did it because I knew that if I was going to go in business, I should pick the hardest major mm-hmm. so that I'd have like the biggest, what was the word? Like the biggest variable of in case I have a, a plan D or a plan C mm-hmm. where I can eventually go in case I want to go that route. Yeah. But plan A is entrepreneur plan a is the dreams that i have that's my plan a and i don't really have a plan b or c like it mentally or emotionally yeah but i have the like the security of in case all else fails yeah you're there yeah having that security is really important like uh y- did you immigrate here or was it your parents you, I, yeah, you, right? you, yeah. you, you like you my dad did immigrate and i was born in egypt i moved here and i was like younger mm-hmm so. Dude, how old were you when you, Three? when you moved here? Three. Oh, nice. So, yeah, you're still pretty young. Like, that's yeah, why yeah, I don't, for sure. I don't yeah. have an accent or anything. I guess. Like, right. Yeah. I remember they put me in ESL class <laughs> when oh, I like really? moved to. I think when I moved here. Was it just because they were like, Cause you're an immigrant. Yeah, they because they asked and they talked to my parent, like my dad, and mm-hmm. he's obviously an accent and stuff. So they're like, okay, uh, let's put him in ESL. <laughs> but I remember sitting in ESL class, like not knowing why I was there, right? Yeah. So I went from ESL class sitting there, and I'm like looking at it, and I answered all the questions, and like I'm talking, and they're like. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. He's <laughs> you don't got it. Normal. So I feel like within a week they moved me up. Like, oh, they, like they put me out. But then in the third grade, then they put me in like the gifted class that they had in the uh, yeah. school. I feel like I was like, okay, this kid actually is in ESL. So I went from ESL one week to normal class one week. And then the next week I was in a gifted class. And that I, fun. I thought it was funny to like watch like how they were like, yeah. okay, we completely mis- misjudged where this kid was going to end up. Good for them though, for like taking it back and being like, adjusting. Oh, we mis- adjusting. Yeah. That was, that's a really big change. I thought, and I think that's really cool. And it was funny because I ended up like being that gifted class i think for a year but then they kicked me out because i was distracting the kids in the class yeah and it's i think it's funny because oh, like, again like i was good at school but i didn't actually enjoy it yeah like i was just there i'm like y'all are boring me like i want to do something more fun yeah I, I i was pretty bored in school too i was a terrible student though like i mean i was I, my grades were decent mm-hmm. but i i was terrible in terms of like paying attention like you know talking to people like uh what's it called doing my homework remembering to do my homework was a pain i'm like bro That's i'm in school I, that, for like however yeah. so many hours I, why, why am i taking work home yeah what's going on <laughs> i saw a video the other day of some kid who's complaining he was like teachers do this 
Because they want to waste your time at they home. They really do, yo. They, they, they're not trying to have us this. And it's like, obviously, when you think about why do we do homework, it's because of having, like, repetition, right? Repetition equals learning and success. Okay, mm. that makes sense. But why can't I get that repetition done in school? <laughs> why can't you give me repetition like that in school? Why do I have to take a 30-minute problem home? Like, 30 minutes of work? Yeah, re- reformat or, like, change the system. Don't, I, I, used like, to always, I used to always get my homework done in school. Yeah, like see, I would that's, literally that's get the homework and then mm-hmm. do it in class. Mm-hmm. My teacher would be teed off because she would see like that I'm working on the homework in class when she's supposed to be teaching. I'd get it done and put it in my desk, and I would just sit the rest of the class like daydream. I would literally daydream. People learn in different ways, man. It's 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 a. I mean, you know, not to hate on the people that built the system, mm-hmm. um, because like the system worked for some time, right? But it was built for like the the factory worker. That's why bells be ringing. Yeah. The bell's only ringing because in the factories, the bell would ring to go oh to the next God. shift. Yeah. It was designed for that. But yeah. now schools evolved. It's like, imagine the phones are so different, but the, the system of the classroom is still the exact same. Mm-hmm. There has to be some sort of evolution. And I talked to a teacher about this. I'm like, so what are you going to do with ChatGPT? She was like, yo, we literally can't stop them. Like, what am I yeah. supposed to do? Go home with them and make them Embrace do their it. homework? So she's like, well, what I do then is like, I'll do in-person things where they have to write. Mm-hmm. She's like, I'll do stuff like that because I have to. But I'm okay with them using ChatGPT to get to that answer themselves. She's like, that's okay. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you have to let them know that you can use it. I use it. But imagine a te- like, are they ready for this? The teacher is using ChatGPT to create a lesson plan yeah. and then this, and giving questions and an- questions to an- for the kids to answer. Kids, <laughs> kids, are, kids are using those questions that ChatGPT yeah. made to answer with answers from ChatGPT. So who's yeah. really doing the work? <laughs> it's just ChatGPT talking to ChatGPT. And Which is nuts. Ju- we're just in the middle kind of like trying to pick pick a... Then who's really thinking? Yeah. Who's really creating anything? Where wow. is it going to be like the fun, creative like, experiences of Christian being a teacher? doesn't want to think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to think. <laughs> but that's the thing. It's like I always wonder like is this going to be like... Like, like again more positive or more negative for like the future of society mm, you know yeah. i think that's where i start thinking about it i'm like yeah it's nice very nice hey i don't want to script this youtube video so, hey chat GPT, give me some ideas for the script blah, blah, blah. so i've also heard the idea where like you know yeah we're, we're giving away our like ability to think about things mm-hmm. right um but it, it maybe it allows us to be more creative in other ways it and, gives us time to because the problem is we're in like this transitionary period where ai is taking like uh the, the really basic jobs ai eventually is going to be able to to do the more complicated jobs mm-hmm. what if we just have uh and this is a long shot what if we just have ai just doing everything for the economy mm-hmm. and then we just live off of all of their work but kind of like modern get- day slavery honestly <laughs> <laughs> but like if 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 that like allows like humanity to like uh to just concentrate on the things that we care about like for example social relationships love uh creativity but then the thing is who's getting like this is how again capitalistic society who's getting mm-hmm. paid how yeah. are you getting paid why are we but a part of this why but then who's controlling you you know what i mean so for example own, own, noth- too. own nothing and be happy right Who's all, who's controlling you? The, the the big brother, quote unquote, is controlling mm-hmm. you. But you're not really living a life based on your own free will of what you want to achieve because you're locked into this thing. I saw mm-hmm. a group of people who created a community garden, mm-hmm. and they were eating off this community garden, right? Like oh, the community built it. I watched a video of it getting cool. taken down. Like wow. the city was like, nah, that's not allowed. Why? Because they that's their profits, right? That's yeah. why that's why companies, corporations, conglomerates will throw out perfectly good food yeah. because why give away food for free and lower our profit margins? They would rather throw away perfectly good food yeah. than give it to people who need it. It's because the same thing with profit. clothes. You saw what H&M did like however yep. so long ago. They just like took all their clothes and just burnt it because <laughs> they didn't want other people to have clothes that they already paid for. I mean, even though it was going to go to trash anyways. Imagine like the ego and the arrogance of like, profits and like that's what runs us as people mm-hmm. so then it goes back to that thing that who really is controlling us well obviously the shareholders give us the the most value yeah you know, obviously they're the ones inventing shit <laughs> they're the ones that matter <laughs> yeah they matter the most <laughs> what, what i really like i and i i don't know too much about this but uh sam altman the ceo of mm-hmm. uh open ai the way he runs his business even though it's a non-profit um well it is a nonprofit uh that i think it's run like a corporation mm-hmm. um and there's some sort of benefits and drawbacks that i heard recently i think a little bit more drawbacks but anyways the idea was that like uh the way that he runs it is the shareholders that are a part of whatever oh i think it's a nonprofit and then a for-profit mm-hmm. and the shareholders that um invest 
can only receive a, a certain limit of profit every year. Mm-hmm. And so like the rest of the money that they're that they're making goes back into the business. So like that makes sense. That's kind of like the agreement that, but that, that's that's not really normal because normally like you have like a board, you have shareholders, and they, they decide like and this they year take profits. And this year we want to increase profits like by whatever they set goals. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, I think increasing profit only makes sense if you're providing more value, mm-hmm. um, not by like squeezing out the last little bit of money that you can make. Yeah, um, it's like little drops of crumbs. Yeah, like, please, man, I want some crumbs. So, so I like the idea of like you know, like having a limit of how much they can make. Because at the end of the day, like shareholders, it's it's seemingly like I mean, they're changing the world right now just because they want to improve profit as much yeah. as possible. Like I think it's it's just like one or two com- It's like three companies maybe like causing the the whole um where what is this recession depression what what are we in right what now? A, the band. We're in some bullshit. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. We're in some, <laughs> some bullshit. We're in some bullshit. <laughs> It's all because of like a handful of companies that decided like, well, you know, we're charging more because of the pandemic. Now everything's back to normal. We're not going to charge less. We're going to keep making the money. Yeah. Know? Like all prices are going to go up because they've been printing money left and right. Like what are they, what are we not supposed to do? Like not increase our revenue. Like we are already losing because it's more expensive for us to buy it. Yeah. But then people's wages aren't really going up. Mm-hmm. People's rent prices going up, but their wages aren't. But then you go ask for a 2% raise. They're like, no. That you know what I mean? So it's again that's why it's like people are losing faith in the system and the system's starting to crumble. But then it's like how do we prepare for the crumbling system when most people aren't even educated to know what's happening with the crumbling system? They're already locked into the game. They're they're you know what I mean, like they're already in, uh, the, yeah. in the matrix, quote unquote, right? So now what are they supposed to do? Educate themselves to get out of it first, but then it's like that requires, like we said, years of work. That requires knowledge, that mm-hmm. requires information. And like you were saying earlier, People could use things for the greater good, right? You could use YouTube and learn literally any skill. You could learn so much. Or you can sit there and watch brain rot content, you know, that doesn't improve you in any way, but you're doing entertainment. But it's really easy to consume a lot of this entertainment. So then it goes back to that point where it's going to require discipline and a factor of you to change your reality. Mm -hmm. But most people now, again, they're going to choose the Wally nom, nom, nom. Nom, nom, nom. I just want to know the percentage of people. Like people say, like, I, cause I agree. I think it's most people. Um, it's like uh, when you talk to someone and they're like, yeah, most people are dumb. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, so does that mean you too? Or <laughs> does that mean <laughs> are me you too? part of the, are you this, me are you me? yeah, is it, are we all a part of, right? So like, uh, I think we're just dumb in so many ways, but we're smart in other ways. The same way that like some people are lazy in so many ways, but they're not lazy in other ways. I'm hoping that it's not the end of the world and that like, you know, people aren't just like lazy bums that yeah. don't ever want to work and do nothing because we've been working for so long yeah. as a society, you know? That's what's increased our society. Like, work is yeah. part of the society. It's mm-hmm. like, even, like, I remember talking to someone about this, and it was saying, like, even if, like, all your needs are met, you have all the money in the world, right, and you have just enjoyment, you're just doing whatever, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to look for something to do. Yeah. Not as work, even, right, mm-hmm. but something that feels like work, yeah. where it's, like, some responsibility, some guidelines, some something, because as humans, we need, we itch, we crave yeah. for do like, doing like they say the doing aspect Mm -hmm. whatever it is you do at least do something right not only doing but accomplishing yeah because you can't just do and just not accomplish anything and and reach some sort of goal like for example uh i I hate to bring him up but dan bilzerian you know what i'm talking Mm -hmm. about yeah 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 ladies ladies guy ladies yeah yeah, billion playboy whatever Mm -hmm. um he he does actually have some some good thoughts about some things like for example he's so rich that he can just access like the best food in the world or whatever Mm -hmm. whenever he wants and it kind of brings them to like a like a like a five in terms of happiness out of ten. You know what I mean? Even though if you gave that that same food to someone who less off, they would be like, <gasps> there, there's like a ten. In the world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I think he said he bought like a Ferrari or a Lambo or something. And after like a day or a couple hours, he's just like, yeah, I don't really want it anymore. And uh, <laughs> like not a lot of things bring get him to a ten anymore. And like it, he said, it, it's kind of sad. You know, like once you have every as much money, really is going to get you almost everything in the world um, except happiness. Mm-hmm. and uh you know it can make you pretty fucking happy to have a yacht but <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, but it's like, about who it's not even about the money or the yacht or this but who you're sharing it with yeah exactly. like the experiences you're having dude mm-hmm. suicide rates of rich people are higher than poor people people find that <laughs> sharing experiences is like the best it's like really what makes us feel fulfilled because mm-hmm. like like you said like the people at the top they're actually kind of lonely so so i've heard i mean you know obviously i don't know any of them mm-hmm. <laughs> but they apparently they're lonely yeah yeah, yeah right uh uh but uh if you can like 
you know, accomplish as much as you can in your lifetime, but still have that community where you can share experiences with people like that's going to keep you uh, from killing yourself. Yeah. And I think that's like. where that's where having your soul like healthy is more the most important. Yeah. How, how your spiritual experiences, your emotional intelligence. Right. Mm-hmm. That's really what's going to make you feel good. Yeah. And I think that's something that I've like really focused on recently. And like I've really been happy because like even if all else fails, I have my spirituality. I have my mm-hmm. faith. I have my I values because. Mm-hmm what's money dude yeah <laughs> money is here in this life but it's an illusion like what it's pieces of paper that's backed by literally nothing regardless of whether or not faith is religion or yourself faith in something other than yourself is really important mm-hmm. yeah seriously because like you need like like we were talking about the actually the reason why i asked you about whether or not you're an immigrant is because mm-hmm. we were talking about having like a like a backup kind of like a base mm-hmm. you know what i mean so having like when you're when you're feeling down but you have faith you have like a base yeah you know you're not going to fall past a certain point mm-hmm. and uh the same way that like you were talking about entrepreneurship and uh, um going towards the things that you want to achieve mm-hmm. like you have a base. So if you didn't have that base, it's really hard to, to like go for it, go for it, you know, mm-hmm. go for the things that you want to do. Um, and uh, that's why I asked if you were an immigrant, because I also come from an immigrant background. I'm not an immigrant, but my parents are. Mm-hmm. Uh, they came here when they were older. One's uh, Ecuadorian and mm-hmm. the other one is Romanian, both from their respective countries. Yeah. And while they were here, they didn't really have a lot of money. My mom cleaned houses. My dad uh, drove a truck. Mm -hmm. He wasn't really in my life because he did, like, national truck driving. Mm -hmm. So I'd see him, like, every two weeks or so. Mm -hmm. Um, And then my mom was really pretty much raising us, like, by herself. So as we were growing, we didn't really have a lot of money um, to, like, do all the extra, like, fun stuff that families do. And the curricular activities where it's, like, the the stuff you see in the movies. Like, they're going to the park together and spending a whole day. (laughs) Actually, for for a time, I, it was only my dad working. So luckily, um, I, my parents spoiled me with love. They weren't able to spoil me with money, um, but they like because my mom like practically like uh, you know um, brought us up. It was me and my brother, by mm-hmm. the way. Um, and uh, because of that, like I, I felt all the love, and we were able to go to the park, and we were able to do all this other mm-hmm. stuff. But it was you know as cheap as possible. Yeah, <laughs> you know. But, but it like, shows that it didn't, you didn't even need the money. Like, it wasn't about the money. It was about, like you said, that experience of love. Like, yeah, having but, that. But then not having that money also made it, made it hard for me even now because I still haven't really built a base mm-hmm. where I'm able to, like, launch uh, and, like, do the things I want to do. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, like, uh, I've been working on – side John has been my side John for, like, a year. <laughs> You know, and I, my main John has been uh, Comcast for the last two years. I've been in the industry for like four years. I worked at like Urban Outfitters before, um, working on their point of sale system. Mm -hmm. But either way, like having most of my time, not being sucked away, but invested into like making money uh, to support myself and kind of keep that base. I only have a a limited amount of time and effort that I can spend like on side John or like the things that I really want to do, which Mm -hmm. is like actually spending time. I spend a lot of time with people still too. I feel Mm -hmm. like I hang out with people a lot. I spend time with my girlfriend a lot. Um, and, uh, balancing all that is pretty hard. So if I had that base, I would just quit, Mm -hmm. you know, and then I would pursue side John, find out if that works. If it doesn't, you know, try something else, try something else. It'd be nice to have like, like that baseline. And that's why, again, like, it's like so funny because I'll look at different like entrepreneurs in the game. Cause obviously as being an entrepreneur, you look at different people in the game, like, Oh, what are they doing different? What am I doing? What can I learn from them? Mm -hmm. And all these people are like, oh, I'm self-made billionaire at 21, 23, blah, blah, blah. Then you look at their parents. One of them is a lawyer. Right, the, other one, yeah. the other one is a is a financial senior management at one of the biggest firms in California. Mm-hmm. And one of their best friends is a, the big, one of the biggest patent owners of in, in the West Coast, right? Okay. He then was the mentor of their 15 year old son who got him his first 10 patents right yeah so now i'm like okay when i was 15 years old i was worried about being on the soccer team and making sure i make varsity and running and then playing soccer and going home and doing my psychology homework like, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i was really different life like, I, and, and, I, and it's getting free and reduced, a more normal right? life is what it sounds like getting yeah. free and reduced lunch and to. joining the the school newspaper right yeah. versus this kid is getting 15 patents at the age of 15 yeah. has a mentor has literally given him the game and then oh wow he's a billionaire by 23 couldn't have told you privilege the benefit of privilege is exponential exponential like it's opportunity opportunity is what makes you successful and that's why Mm -hmm. it's like even if you're starting at the bottom constantly look for opportunity opportunity is what's going to get you to the next level 
be places, meet people in these events, talk, interact, be the person you are in all these different places. Find the places to meet people of the sorts, right? It's like, yeah. I want to, I wish, I want to find a girlfriend or a wife or someone that loves hiking as much as I do. Okay, then just keep hiking until you find that person hiking too. It's possible. You yeah. know, it's like do the things to get the people around you that are doing what it is. Like go to I would, communities. I would have never met you. Shops. I would have never met you, right, if I didn't go to other tech entrepreneurship events. Mm-hmm. How mm-hmm. would I have met you? You're in Easton. You know what I mean? I'm in Philly. Yeah. So how else are you going to – how are we going to connect? There's right? no other way. Unless I physically go to a place where there's people like me. Yeah. Boom. Or if you virtually go to a place. I mean, yeah. you know. There's events. Yeah. Dude, there's constant events. I will say, though, I've joined some online events, and mm. they became really hard to actually meet and talk to people. Because I bet, like, yeah. Because, like, okay, I can send them a LinkedIn message. Mm-hmm. Then what? They'll be talking and stuff, and they want to schedule a call, but I'm like – I don't know who you are. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's a little weird. Like It is you, pretty weird. And it's like, you have the LinkedIn connection, so eventually in the future, if you want to send them something or to have them try something, you can. Mm-hmm. But even then, like, you're really meeting this person. Are you really talking to this person? Are you just kind of, hey, this is my virtual self. Hello. Yeah. Well, what would be great is if uh, you had, like, a connector. Like, for example, Isabel, uh, the CEO of PSL, is a great connector. You can ask her for anyone, and she will be like, you should talk to this person, that person, this She got person. a Rolodex in her head. Yeah. But what if you could have, like, a, a digital connector like her, mm-hmm. except uh, they know more about the person, and so they'd be able to give you a recommendation that, like, literally would be almost perfect for you. Mm-hmm. So if you're looking for, like, I don't know, um, someone to hike with, then you would find someone that's interested in hiking, someone who, you know, fits your personality, has like, you know, you obviously have to balance a lot of traits out. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, what, I, I would trust them. And then like, would you, instead of like someone reaching out to you on LinkedIn and then asking for a call, what if this connector was like, hey, you should probably talk to this like this mm-hmm. LinkedIn person uh, and uh, you guys are probably going to hit it off. Would you trust the digital, the the that like tool? Honestly, yes. Because, right? Because at the end of the day, you just require some sort of point of reference, right? Mm, you need some point sort of reference, of, right? Some sort of thing where you're like, this person knows this person and now knows this person. Yo, this person, and this person with this, but then this person needs to be a quality connector. Mm-hmm. And some people are quality connectors, right? You know, yeah. so it's like finding a quality connector. And what if the AI could be this quality connector where it mm-hmm. literally knows our interests, values, what we like, what we don't like, and then it finds people that also are doing similar things. That would it just takes be... your personality type. It takes your, um, it takes your interest. It takes this, all these different little categories. Mm-hmm. And honestly, at the same time, you really don't even need to be. It doesn't need to be set in stone. Like all these different traits need to like match up perfectly, no, and there needs to be some. It has some things that could work. It's like a probability type thing, you know. You'll probably like some like this algorithm guy. can figure yeah, it out as well. Yeah. Maybe you could use like a mental. Uh, what's it called? Not a mental model. Um, uh, yeah, machine learning or whatever to figure mm-hmm. that out. But um, hey, there's an idea right there. Well, that's the idea I have for Side John. Actually, yeah. I was gonna say it sounds like Side John, except add a little more personal like, stuff to here and here, where it's not just founders and creatives, but also, you know what I mean, like mm-hmm. people. Yeah, people. There's actually an app called the uh, Lifer, L Y F E R. I mm-hmm. think. Have you Have you talked to? I've I've seen it. Yeah, and uh, he's in the community. He's a part of PT, mm-hmm. um, and I think it's, maybe you've heard of him at PSL. Um, but uh, I like his idea, which is like an app that like just connects people to just live life together. I think mm-hmm. to just like improve your life. I'm not gonna lie; I haven't looked into it. I've only like heard on the peripheral. Um, mm-hmm. But it reminded me of Sajon because I'm connecting people for like a different reason. So like, uh, and then there's also it's funny like all these apps really just connect people. Like DoorDash connects you to a restaurant with a driver. Mm-hmm. Uh, Facebook connects you to other specific people. LinkedIn connects you to uh, corporate specific people. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, you're always just always just being connected, and that's the end goal of yeah. media and social media is to connect. Even when I, if you make that's a, true. if you make you make a video and you're posting it, you're just willing. You're just trying to connect with people. Mm. That's really the end goal. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes now we're forgetting that because like it's so normalized. So you're mm. not realizing that this is a connection. You're that's not true. realizing that you're connecting with people. Yeah. And nowadays it's just like oh I follow them they follow me back okay cool that's it. And it goes at that where I swipe up and put fire emoji on the yeah. stories. Like that's connecting. And that it just is. feels so good. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I'm connecting with this person. Yeah. Yo, they like my stories. Yeah. Wow. Give me that red heart. That makes me feel better. Wow. You know, you really love me. Like, and it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, all right. Like, and that's where it's hard, like nowadays, to like internalize that human experience yeah. virtually. But I wanted to ask you, right? Obviously, like I always ask this to all, like, all of my guests and stuff. But what is one of your most unpopular opinions? Oh, man. Um, I feel like uh, not 
everyone needs to be involved in everything. Or like, like not everyone can be saved or like, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Kinda just like, it's kind of like the nature of the world. There's like, um, not to say that there's a strong in the weak yeah. or anything like that, but just for example, like, uh, the Olympics, mm-hmm. you know, um, they, the Olympics has, uh, is, is for people that are extremely exceptional with like athletic capabilities, whether it's like a, a specific sports, mm-hmm. uh, flexibility, you know, whatever it is, gymnastics, um, should they just start accepting anyone just because we want to be like all inclusive? Mm-hmm. You know, like there's their skills. There's, they built skills and attributes to be this elite individual. Well, there needs to be like context to everything. You know, mm-hmm. like uh, for example, like um, oh man, I'm trying to think. Like we want to be all inclusive, uh, but then there's a paradox because if you want to be all inclusive, usually the people that are like, yeah, all inclusivity. You know, we want everyone involved in everything, and there shouldn't be any barriers for anyone. They create a barrier for the people that disagree with them. Yeah. And so, are you? Isn't shouldn't you be including them too? Like, yeah. I mean, no, that's a good point. You know, so it's it's a paradox. It's really up to you to decide. You know, who needs to be in what? Uh, you need to create the context around what it is that you want them to be in, and then who it is that you're like targeting. Because you can't just like accept everyone and everything. Because that honestly, I don't want to say that's not how the world works. Um, that's just how the world hasn't worked. Yeah. Um, it's like there's a reason why like certain groups of people are together and certain people groups of people aren't. It's certain there's a reason why this person could be in a relationship with this person, but this person could not be in a relationship with this person. It just doesn't yeah. work. Like not everyone needs to like everyone at every regard and every yeah, single thing. Exactly. We're all gonna have our differences, we're all gonna have things that make us good, bad, equal, up, down, left, right. Like it's all it's not a zero sum game, right? And I think it's interesting you had kind of say that because it's not just like inclusivity almost sounds crazy sometimes where it's like something that i saw right (laughs) again this is my personal opinion as well but like i saw like from like people were making fun of the show friends right but Mm -hmm. they were making fun of and saying like oh but it's just showing like a group of six white people i'm like okay but a group of six white people can be friends like they don't have to have had a black friend in that initial friend group or a spanish friend or a gay friend or this friend but then they were interacted with them Mm -hmm. and they were cool with everyone so it's not like it was a racist friend group because they didn't have a black kid or a token asian kid or the token indian kid but nowadays you see shows and everything i swear to you (laughs) i see these shows i'm like this friend group does not exist in real life yeah yeah. where they have one gay queer person one trans one black kid uh one white kid but the white kid's a little quirky aside the one indian kid one black kid oh now there's not and they're all in the same friend group i'm like okay one plays sports, one does art, one does this. I'm like, okay, time out, time out, time out, time out. <laughs> how are these people all How do friends? they meet each other? Like, how, yeah, where did they, what's the connecting piece yeah. that got all of them to be friends? Yeah. There's a reason why when you're on a sports team, you tend to be friends with a lot of people that are also on your team because you do something so much, mm-hmm. so to- much time with this person. Mm-hmm. So to become genuine good friends, whatever it is, you have to do all the time together. Maybe they're all somehow connected to a robotics class, right? Yeah. But, most likely, this person who also likes sports is most likely not going to be as locked into the robotics class or this art theater class yeah. that this person is and this person. And then, okay, this person's gay and has this person as a friend who's the most religious person in the world. Like, da, 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 da. It's like, okay, people can be friends. But, like, having them be as a friend group mm-hmm. is a lot different. And I think that's kind of, like, a point that I'll kind of add on to the inclusivity thing. Like, not yeah. everything is going to be 100,000% inclusive to everyone. I, I would say that you could probably set this, like, uh, the statement I'm about to say to, to all of that, to friendships, to, mm-hmm. like, different groups, to, like, uh, different competitions, to, like, to like uh, universities even, and, like, the acceptance process. Yeah. It's, like, inclusivity is important, and it needs to be realistic, but most specifically uh, pragmatic. Yeah. It needs to be very pragmatic because, like, for example, like, let's say we, uh, you know, obviously, like, we're, we're in the modern world and we all believe that, like, every life is valuable, right? Mm-hmm. But, like, are your opinions valuable on, like, you know, uh, global warming if you're not a scientist? Do we care about Kanye's political affiliation? He makes music. <laughs> like it's like it's like what it's like what Kanye said himself. Like Lady Gaga was like the creative director of Polaroid, yeah, or K- Kodak or whatever. Yeah. Polaroid, Polaroid I think. yeah, yeah. What does she know about cameras? Yeah, you know, like it's just so. 
It's just like there needs to be context, you know. Yeah. You can't like if you want uh, inclusive inclusivity, like you you're not going to listen to like uh, someone who barely finished high school tell you how to like design the education system, or you're not gonna listen because you to, have like, to have gone through it to understand what to fix. You're not gonna listen to them on foreign policy. Mm-hmm. So it's it's like it it you you can listen to them and you maybe you should maybe you should consider it. But like, sh- should you though? Like, yeah, it's so, a, you can listen to people giving you advice, but you don't have to take it. <laughs> inclusivity needs to be pragmatic. Yeah, pragmatic. Uh, I like that. I like that. Yeah. And another thing I always ask is, um, what's it a word in Arabic that you want to learn? And you chose coffee. Oh yeah. And I heard it. I, I, I chose it specifically because I looked up hard words to learn in, <laughs> in Arabic. <laughs> okay. So um, a funny thing is that there's a restaurant like a cafe a, mm-hmm. that's popping up all over like east coast i know there's one in michigan um it's called uh kahua house oh man and it just means like coffee house mm-hmm. but kahua 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 is how you say coffee mm. and like egyptian slang arabic it's like more ahua 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 but, yeah, yeah but the theoretical way is it's kahua, kahua. oh like a like a, like a, like yeah. a soft g like, like a q a h kahua yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's how you say coffee. Oh. And then I always ask, what is your favorite quote? Hmm. Loki, well, I forget what I gave you. I can um, I mean I but I, it down. one of my one of my favorite quotes though is by Albert Einstein. It's something like uh I it's not that I'm smarter than everyone, it's that I work on a problem longer. Mm-hmm. It's something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like that one. And then the one I think the one you wrote was uh no man is the same. Oh yeah. So it's like uh uh no one man uh, steps into the same river because he is not the same man and the river is not the same river. Yeah. yeah it's because not the same. Something like that. So because things are always changing. I have it backwards. But yeah, 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 you get it. Yeah. Things are always adapting. The river is never the same. It's always flowing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, as a person, you always change from second to second. I mean, like if you talk about like uh, what's it called? Like your your molecules, your mm-hmm. your cells, like it's always changing. You're like I think it's like every couple of years you are a completely different like set of and that, uh, genetically, like, gene- like, yeah, uh, cell wise. Yeah, like your skin yeah. cells, those are dead skin cells falling off of our skin. Yeah, until all those original skin cells from six years ago are now not there. Well, the reason why I like that quote specifically is because uh, people like uh, marry themselves to their ideas, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it, they find it really hard to change uh, like the way that they think. Mm-hmm. Um, so like. You know, it's because you are never the same um, all the time uh, and you're always growing and you're always changing, like, why shouldn't your ideas? Yeah. Let yourself be convinced by, like, the things that people say around you and let yourself, like, kind of, like, you know, explore these other tunnels of thinking. Yeah. Um, because, uh, you know, I mean, you you should be changing. It, it's very normal to, to go in different directions. Mm-hmm. Um, don't, yeah, it, don't become like your idea. Like if you're, if you're super into like inclusivity, don't let that become your personality. Yeah. Cause then be a multifaceted person. Yeah. Yeah. Once people start questioning you and you start getting all defensive and like egotistical, you know, it's, it's not really, it, it doesn't make for a conducive environment, mm-hmm. um, even for yourself. No, I like that. Well, first and foremost, I want to thank you again for stepping Thanks, on man. the podcast and yeah. it's been an ex- amazing experience. Yeah, thanks. No, this was this was really cool. I'm glad that you have this. Congratulations on uh, the way that everything looks and like the vibe of the podcast. Yeah, um, I'm glad we're both not in headphone land. Yeah, yeah. This was this was nice actually. No, no exactly. Yeah. Then you're sitting there hearing yourself talk. Yeah, and... yeah. Well, thanks for having me, man. No, of yeah, course. This is great. So thank you guys again for tuning in to another episode of the Oli Cannoli Show. Again, today we had Christian. So please leave a bunch of friendly comments down below. It's been an amazing conversation where we get to talk about everything even got to talk about avatar last airbender which i was not expecting but really like so if you guys want to be in the same seat where he's sitting down in the description there'll be a link to apply to the show please do i would love to hear your story and talk to you so i'll see you guys next time on the Oli cannoli show